been extremely happy with what his Jets have been able to do in the first half of the season, but doesn't want what happened in the last half of the season to happen to them again this year. They only won one game in the last half of 1984. The Jets will get the ball first. Quad Reves will kick with the wind. New York won the first game in the, at Giant Stadium 23 to seven. It comes down to Bobby Humphrey. And he stops shy of the 20 yard line. Downfield was Alex Moyer, a rookie from Northwestern. Ken O'Brien brings the Jets on the field. Freeman McNeil, the NFL's number one rusher, just shy of 1,000. Tony Page, the big fullback. Veteran Wesley Walker. Al Toon is starting today. Kurt Sohn is ill, and we may see him, but uh, he was very ill prior to the game. The tight end, Schuler, their leading receiver. Billy Shields is starting at left tackle for the injured Reggie McElroy, Sweeney, Fields, Alexander, and Powell on that front line for the New York Jets. That's McNeil in motion. O'Brien comes out throwing and has a gain of about seven or eight as Rocky Cleaver. Cleaver from Montana, the second tight end as the Jets open with a double tight end. The white jerseyed Miami Dolphins have a front three of Doug Betters playing a solid season again, a pro bowler. Mike Charles on the nose, uh, questionable. Kim Bocamper has been injured. The linebackers, Brzezinski, Ship, Brown, the leading tackler, and Hugh Green from Tampa Bay will give you the back four after this play. McNeil's first carry, a fumble, and O'Brien was able to pounce on it at the 25. O'Brien, after the handoff to McNeil, was the right man in the right spot, able to bounce on that loose ball as Doug Betters made the hit. McNeil still wearing that heavy pad for his ribs. He's injured in the ribs. He gets that football. It looked like he just didn't get it tucked away. The ball falling free as you see it there. Betters scooting his arm in there and an alert play by Ken O'Brien to save that fumble. From the 25, it's third and four. Walker in motion. O'Brien going long to Schuler, and interference will be called against Miami. 47, Glenn Blackwood, contact before the ball arrived. You could see Schuler, Merlin, getting set to leap up, but he had a man right on his heels, couldn't get in the air. Blackwood alertly, I think, stepping on the heels and hoping to get away with that move. Number 47, defense, first down. And with it, the first down at the 42. Looking at it from behind the quarterback, the throw out to the left, and watch right as this ball is approaching, Blackwood will step on his shoes, right? Oh, there's the push. Didn't step on him, actually pushed him. It looked like Schuler went up early. I think he may have mistimed that catch, ended up with a penalty. And a first down at the 42. Great block by Dan Alexander to pick up the linebacker on that last pass. And O'Brien has to use a timeout. Check the defense, running out of time, and the New York Jets spend one of those precious timeouts. No score, a minute and a half has been played. Merry Christmas. This year, I needed to give a real family pleaser. Honey, please help me with this budget. How about a new game, Dad? Please. 
and I found it. Radio Shack's Color Computer 2. On sale for just $88. It entertains, educates, manages, it's expandable, and affordable. Now that really pleases me. The Color Computer 2. Sale price for Christmas. Only at Radio Shack. Sun setting and the southern Florida sky could be a factor for the teams looking back at a passer into that sun, Merlin. Dick, as they toss the coin, this is one of the few days you might have wanted to lose that toss because that guarantees you the ball in the second half. And right now, the team that lost the toss, Miami has forced the receivers of the Jets to look back into that sun. And also Miami has the uh, wind at its back here early in the game and it tends to die as the sun falls. O'Brien, wide open Schuler. Schuler, who came into the game with 38 catches to lead the Jets, gets an easy one there in a six-yard gain. No one there for Miami's secondary, and you see the names there of Langford, Judson at the corners, and Blackwood and Butt Brown. Schuler featured more and more as the Jets have gotten into the season. He's playing with a sore thumb, dislocated his thumb two weeks ago against the Seahawks, but he doesn't seem to be bothered by that so far, Dick. From the 48. O'Brien. Doug Betters leading the sack parade. Came into the game with four and a half. You saw Jim Sweeney lose his helmet trying to protect O'Brien. And then O'Brien lost the yards. In the sequence of activities for the quarterback, O'Brien is comfortable in calling the plays. He's comfortable in getting to the line, calling the audibles. But when you lose, it actually, when, when he loses his way, when he doesn't find an open receiver, he has real problems. You saw it right there. He seems to break down at that point. Third and about 15, Freeman McNeil. And McNeil out to the 46-yard line, and Sweeney lost his helmet again downfield. He better buckle that thing on. Short of the first down as Mark Brown made the tackle. They gained the 11 that they lost on the previous sack. The Jets love to run in those obvious passing situations and that's a real concern for Chuck Studley and his defense but they have gotten off well so far in this game. Veteran Dave Jennings from St. Lawrence. There are his numbers on the year 42 yard average as long as 66 and deep to return Tommy Vigorito from the University of Virginia. He's inside the 15 just uh, activated injured the first half of the year. Tony Page is the up back. Vigorito, no fair catch, 20. 25. Fumble, and it appears the Jets recovered at the 37-yard line. A 36-yard punt, 20-yard return, and New York has the football. Just as Don Shula had to believe that his Miami Dolphins are off to a fast start, here's Vigorito breaking outside. An excellent return. Gets good blocking on the outside. Looks like he's going to have a big gain, and it looked like Bingham, 64, that reached in and stripped that ball away. Rocky Cleaver, number 89, alertly pounced on it, and the Jet offense has a second opportunity, only with much better field position. Yeah, that's three plays early that have gone the way of the Jets. The fumble that O'Brien fell on, then the interference call, and now Vigorito's fumble. Jets begin at the 37. O'Brien to McNeil, 25 and out of bounds at the 23. Make it the 22, Freeman McNeil. A 14-yard pass play. Brzezinski made the tackle. That's just the long handoff to McNeil. He, of course, the outlet receiver for O'Brien, who's having trouble finding open receivers downfield. But or McNeil just accelerated through that hole, blew his way down to a first down on the 22. Jets in Miami territory with 11.39 remaining first quarter. O'Brien going for six. No good. Oh, he caught that football. Can you believe the athletic talent of Al Toon on that play? Bounced it and caught it, but he was out of the end zone. 
Toon trying to go over the top of William Judson. There's the number one draft pick of the University of Wisconsin. Isolation on William Judson, number 49. Watch Toon. He waits until the last second. He'll tap that ball in the air and then goes after it a second time. He gets the football, but he's out of the end zone. That's amazing concentration. Acrobatic try by Toon for naught. Bringing up second and ten. O'Brien fumbles. And they're still scrambling. Joe Fields seemed to have a chance at recovery, and Fields, the veteran center, does get it. So that's three fumbles, and we've played less than four minutes, and the Jets have recovered all three. And that's exactly the same kind of situation. When O'Brien can't find the receiver, he looks like he's lost here, and he gets hooked from behind. A good play by the defense. It looked like Dan Alexander had the first shot, but Fields is the man who saved it. Rookie George Little, number 99, had a great chance at a fumble recovery. Couldn't pick it off. Third down. 13. Johnny Hector wrapped up. Kim Camper and another fumble. Is it allowed? No. They said he was on the ground. They say he was on the ground. Miami was trying to call timeout on that last play. Two Miami Dolphins defenders trying to call timeout. I don't know the reason for that. Joe Walton. His team has been fortunate to hang on to the pumpkin and Don Shula. You know, he has his club fired up five and four coming in. Pat Leahy will try a field goal out of the hold of backup quarterback Pat Ryan. It'll be a 41-yard attempt. Leahy's had a good year. He's made 12 of the last 13. Make that 13 of the last 14. the win no good so the Jets fail from 41 this is what a BMW computer says to its engine does with that information. You could choose Heineken solely because it's far and away Europe's favorite. And Europeans know their beer. Or you could choose Heineken because it's far and away America's number one imported beer. Americans know their beer too. Or you could open it and pour it and choose it for the best of all possible reasons. Heineken is the best beer in the world. Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. Who has expanded your TV picture by adding four new corners? It's RCA. Introducing RCA's picture window TVs. Sleek, slender screens with full corner-to-corner -corner picture. They're all picture. All RCA ingenuity. And as pretty off as on. The new picture window TVs in new larger screen sizes from RCA. Technology that excites the senses. America's favorite pastime returns to NBC as the nation's top rollers battle it out for Bowler of the Year honors. Join Jay Randolph and Bowler of the Decade Earl Anthony for the PBA Fall Tour next Saturday on NBC. Pat Leahy on a 13 of 14 successful streak missing from 41 yards and Miami has the football offensively for the first time at their 24. Ten minutes remaining, first quarter. Marino comes out throwing. Ron Davenport drilled, no gain. Bobby Jackson up from the corner to make the hit. Marino at quarterback. Here's the rest of the offense for the Miami Dolphins. 
Tony Nathan, the reliable all-purpose back, and Woody Bennett at fullback. Nat Moore, the veteran all-time receiver in Miami history. Mark Clayton, only one touchdown catch this year. Bruce Hardy is the tight end. Geisler had an operation on his knee, arthroscopic, two weeks ago. He's in the starting lineup. Foster, all-pro center, Dwight Stevenson, Jeff Taze, and Cleveland Green, the offensive line in front of Marino. Lorenzo Hampton runs right into Rusty Gilbo with plenty of help. A gain of two, it's third down and eight. The defense of the New York Jets, second only to the Giants. Gastineau, Klecko, and Bennett up front. The linebackers of Jackson, Clifton, Mel, the leading tackler, and Gilbo made the first hit on the last play. Bobby Jackson and rookie Kerry Glenn at the corners. Glenn for the injured Russell Carter, Kirk Springs, and Johnny Lynn at safety. is in for the first time. Activated after a long layoff. Has only four catches this year. Over the middle, Nathan. 40. Fumbles. And who gets this one? A scramble. And the Jets say they have it, but it's a huge pile at the midfield stripe. Nathan just ran right out of his own grasp. To say that both of these teams offensively are tight is an understatement. That ball bouncing around on the field as if this were a tennis match. It's a 24-yard gain if Miami recovers it. That's a fourth fumble, and we've played only six and a half minutes. And they're still fighting for that ball under that pile of bodies. The officials trying to go in there, and nobody wants to turn loose of that ball. It's a case of who has the leverage as they unpile. Some guys try to get back in there from the outside. They say, hey, at least get out of there. And Miami has maintained possession. Just a quick look at the end of that play and the fumble. You see the ball bouncing on the ground. Several players having a chance at it. Mark Clayton, 83, is the man. Now look at, he was able to dive under the pile, and he came up with the ball, Clayton. So the first fumble recovered by Miami is a very important one as they maintain possession after the long gainer, 24 yards, first down at their own 49. Ron Davenport, the rookie from Louisville. Kyle Clifton made the tackle. Let's run down all the scores for you. The early action in this, the 10th week of the season. Cincinnati, at least to share first place in the AFC Central, a 27-10 win there. Pittsburgh tied then with Cincinnati with its win at Kansas City. The Giants have defeated the Rams, only the second loss for Los Angeles. The Giants, at least to share first. The Bears remain unbeaten, 24-3 at home against the Lions. 27-3 Seattle, big at New Orleans. 16-0, Tampa Bay celebrates its first win of the year over the Cardinals. They play the Jets next week, Tampa Bay. Marina to Nathan, decked at the 44-yard line. Kirk Springs made a vicious hit. I think Springs may have hurt himself on that shot. Bob Reese, the trainer, out quickly. The Jets already playing without Russell Carter, their normal starting right cornerback. Watch the hit right here. Springs pop. But he hit high on the body there, and I think, I don't know, may have pinched a nerve. It's hard to tell from that shot what he did, but he is not moving around very well on the ground. So there's a timeout with seven minutes, 17 seconds left in a scoreless first quarter. Direct from the future. Our team hits the air. NFL 85. Shielded from our view, Kirk Springs, he did not appear to be seriously hurt. Donnie Elder, number 37, a rookie from Memphis State, has replaced him. While we have a moment, let's clean up the scoreboard. Here are the other finals. New England putting pressure on the Jets. Uh, Miami win, and New England has to share first place. Green Bay wins at Minnesota by 10. Buffalo, a shutout over Houston, 20 to nothing. And it's Philadelphia 23, Atlanta 17, a win in overtime for the Eagles. Third and three at the 44 for Miami. Out of 
the shotgun Marino. Incomplete. Intended for Joe Rose, the tight end, and so the Dolphins will have to bring on the punting team. Miami, a team that has been tough to beat at home. They're 4-0 this year for their five wins and have lost only twice in the last 23. Those two losses, by the way, to, to the Raiders last year and to Buffalo earlier, but Shula knows that his Dolphins really are backed up against the wall. You saw his quote earlier about how important this game is to them. The game sensibly being played by these these two teams offensively seem to be so tight today that ball bouncing around a lot of fumbles so far in this game neither offensive team able to get anything going so far Reggie Roby averaging nearly 45 a kick and Jojo Townsell at the other end a huge kick fair catch at the eight well, Roby did his job the Jets will start from inside their 10-yard line on a 36-yard punt by Roby. No score, 641 left in the quarter. When you're dealing with higher volumes of information and need answers fast, you search everywhere for solutions, but find it hard to get on top of things. That's why IBM created the personal computer AT with the power to push high performance even higher. With the AT, fast becomes faster, and the capacity to handle data becomes greater to help put your business on solid ground. The IBM Personal Computer AT for advanced technology. Stupid brother, stop patting birds on the head. I was congratulating them on getting their Metropolitan Life wings. Metropolitan what? Snoopy wants to make sure that Met claim checks get delivered promptly, so he's developing his own squadron. You expect me to believe that? Wagon Jetta. The NFL plays here when the Chargers battle the Broncos. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 85. Kirk Springs leaving the field. Bruised thigh and bruised arm in that collision earlier in this first period. The New York Jets start from just outside their eight-yard line. They had driven deep after the fumble recovery on Vigorito's uh, punt return, but missed on a 41-yard field goal. Al Toon to the left, Wesley Walker to the right, that's Schuler in motion. O'Brien to Toon, and the rookies open at the 30, the 40. Al Toon all the way to the Miami 47. Big Jets play. Dropping down to look at that play from behind the quarterback, O'Brien. O'Brien gets a good fake here. It holds the defense in place. Gives him extra time to look for the open receiver. Does a good job of delivering that ball. But watch Toon. He just ducks underneath right there and breaks back outside. Actually, the tackle of Mark Brown straightened Toon up and sent him the other way. First down at the Miami 47, a 44-yard play. O'Brien throwing again, wide open, Walker, and he can't hang on. Wesley Walker all alone in the near flat. That's so frustrating for Walker, I'm sure, but that's a pass he's trying to do something with before he got it in his hand. And on the sideline, you know, there are a lot of angry coaches. You can't afford to drop the easy catch. O'Brien finding Walker all alone, and the Dolphins' corners respecting Walker's great speed were playing off that wide receiver. You see how late it was before uh, Blackwood came into the picture. to tune 
And a lot of bumping and shoving and tune had gone out of bounds, so even had he caught the ball, it would not have been allowed. San Diego at home, and boy, they've been really buzzing down in Southern California in that matchup as San Diego leading 7-0, and that defense is much improved for the Chargers. Third and ten, and Shula sends in four new defensive faces. O'Brien throwing the ball a lot more than expected. Much higher percentage than we're used to seeing from the Jets. O'Brien incomplete to tune. Judson made the hit. Another pass, however, that should have been caught. Realizing that their great success against these Dolphins in that Monday night victory was on the ground, one has to wonder why they're putting it in the air so much here in the first quarter. The punt by Dave Jennings, and it will look like this to Tommy Vigoretto, who stands at the 10-yard line. He has to look toward that kick. The sun will be off to his left, but nevertheless... I just saw him lift his eyes up to try and check that sun, too. It has to be murdersome out there to try and catch that ball out of that bright light. Yeah, we'll just leave you in Vigorito's position. This is how he will see this punt. And the fair catch inside the 10. You think that's an easy oh, job with all those that behemoths? Bright flash of light. As that ball dropped down through the sun, a good job by Tommy Vigorito. Good, solid hands as he just took it inside the eight. Put it down. Here he is looking at that ball, following it all the way. Concentration. Well, I'll tell you, there, there's a great example of it. And a good kick by Jennings. 39 yards, no return. And just as the Jets started at the eight, so on this sequence will Miami begin at its eight-yard line. Second quarter, Cowboys and Redskins in that battle. A renewal of quite a rivalry, no score. First place at stake there. Dallas needs a win to stay with the Giants. Duper and Clayton are in. Clayton to the right. Duper split left. Marino from his goal line. Wide open is Duper. And Duper, welcome back, says Miami. A flag is down. It might be against the Jets' Johnny Lynn for holding up Duper. Dan Marino has missed the speed in the hands of Mark Duper. When he and Clayton are running in tandem, they can stretch a defense till it breaks. Holding number 35 defense. And lifts the climb. First down. Rookie Kerry Glenn saw Duper getting away and tried to drag him down. It still goes for a 44-yard advance. Here's that last play for you. Plenty of time for Dan Marino, and that is dangerous. You've got to get pressure on him. The Jets playing aggressive man-to-man -man defense, and you see what Duper had done to his man. Simply left him behind. Johnny Lynn did a good job of saving a touchdown. 44-yard play, just as Al Toon had a 44-yard reception for the Jets. Lorenzo Hampton, former Florida star, shy of the 45. Joe Klecko, number 73. Let's take a look at him. What a great matchup between Klecko and Dwight Stevenson. Klecko sliding inside. That's Jeff Taves blocking down on him. Lorenzo Hampton, number 27, actually running behind that block, cutting back against the green. But I think this is a matchup of two bulls down there in the down there in the pits. Klecko got the best of the earlier matchup in that Monday night game. Stevenson was wired when I talked to him yesterday. He wants another piece of Klecko today. Did a good job on that effort. Second and seven. Ron Davenport. No one got Barry Bennett. 78. From Concordia, Minnesota. A loss of five. It'll bring up third down. And about 12. See Bud Carson over there on the sideline sending it. Usually he'll send in the, the defenses with a substitute, although he can signal them in. The Jets actually use two signals, one for the defense and one for who is going to be substituted on the field. Long yardage, Marino out of the shotgun. 
Duper left. Clayton to the top of your screen. He's going for Clayton, but way too long. He had to hurry it away as the Jets were putting on plenty of pressure on number 13. Well, you should remind you that Dan Marino, playing with a badly bruised thigh, was able to move around quite well yesterday. As you see a score for Dallas in that game against Washington, but still, it's not very healthy out there. And he'll get rid of that ball early. He always does, but in particular, he will today because of that injury. Raphael Septien, a 39-yard field goal to get the Cowboys on the board first in Washington. Line of scrimmage is the 50. Lyle Blackwood, 42, just on the field for the Dolphins. Some confusion there. That won't make Shula happy either. JoJo Townsell stands back at the Jets, 10. That unusual style of Roby and one of his poor kicks. Aim for the sidelines. A flag is down, and the kick by Roby slicing sharply at an angle would be a very short kick unless the Jets were guilty of the foul. That would be a costly, well, depending on when it was, when the foul took place. Let's look at Reggie Roby's drop after we have a chance to listen to the official. Holding, and that's an automatic first down. That's just like a turnover, Dick. Cocks the air by the Jets. It gives Miami the football, puts their offense back on the field. After the kick, post possession, first down for the receiver. Oh, it's oh, after the kick. It's after the kick. All right. So if they say the ball will go over to the Jets, and here comes Shula to argue the fact, but it depends on the timing of the foul. They said it was after possession of change, which means it's after the ball had been kicked. So the Jets maintain possession. They mark off the five yards down to the 15-yard line. And in this scoreless first quarter, we have nearly four minutes remaining. And, boy, that ball has really been bouncing around. Four fumbles. Raiders have come back to tie the Chargers in San Diego in the first quarter. Ken O'Brien, part of that 1983 quarterback draft, was picked... 24th in front of Marino. McNeil. Gained a couple. Bob Brzezinski made the hit. Now that's more of what we expected to see in this game from the Jets. They've been throwing repeatedly. That play, they're attacking the outside. Miami's defense has been porous up the middle. They've really had trouble on the nose and with the young linebackers inside. It's an understatement to say they've had trouble against the run. They've been devoured the last four weeks by the opponent's running game. McNeil again. Jackie Ship. Number 50. Got him from behind. One of the big things that Miami had to do was to play the running game aggressively. Let's look at four running backs who've had field days the last four weeks against this team. McNeil gained 173, then Wilder of Tampa Bay, 98 yards. Jones of the Lions, 114. And last week, Craig James of the Patriots, 119 yards. And Dick, a good defensive team is embarrassed when a back goes over 100 yards against them. Complete. Freeman McNeil. Good catch by McNeil and a first down out at the 29. Let's follow him out of the offensive set. You know that their eyes are focused on this man in the running game, but here he is, a little swing out to the outside on the pass. William Judson, 49. That's the respect right there to put a put a cornerback on the running back, but that ball perfectly thrown and thrown in an area where it could not be intercepted. McNeil went down and picked it up. A dozen yards and a first down. Now McNeil running into a stone wall, and he doesn't gain an inch. Is Doug better, 75, and Brzezinski, 59, with their helmets right there to stop him. On the sideline, the man who coordinates this defense, and boy, I'll tell you, he's been hearing some howls from this crowd. Chuck Steadley in the black shirt. That's Mike Kowalski, an injured player, giving the signals, standing right next to him. I'm sure he's had a lot of sleepless nights, but his defense playing pretty well right now. Second and ten. Johnny Hector in motion. 
draw play to McNeil. And they're really ganging up on Freeman McNeil. Mark Brown, 51, spearheaded that charge. So McNeil has had the ball five straight times against the Vice squad, V-I-S-E. Gain three, no gain. Caught the pass for 12, no gain, and just picked up two that time. Mike Kozlowski is the man who's signaling in the defenses for Miami. He's on the injured list. Kozlowski, the fine safety man, they miss him. Johnny Hector. And a first down at midfield for the Jets. O'Brien coming up with a big throw again. That's a very nice pass. That's a stop pattern. And boy, that is about as tough as anything when you're trying to cover those receivers tight and all of a sudden they just stop and the ball is there. That's some good zip on that ball. Hector handling the ball well and getting out of bounds with it for the first down. He had that broken hand and now the wrap is off and that's really uh, added another dimension to the Jets offense now that he can come in in a pass situation. to tune for short yardage wrestled down by Judson number 49 no score less than a minute remaining first quarter let's go to NFL 85 all right Dick at San Diego the Chargers take a 7-0 lead on a Fouts to West Chandler pass and then back come the Raiders Mark Wilson 35 yards to the rookie Jesse Hester so they've exchanged first quarter touchdowns even up at seven back to Dick and Merlin all right, Bob, in the seconds, final seconds ticking away, 13, 12, 11, and apparently we have seen the last play of this initial period. Those two goose eggs are certainly misleading. We've had plenty of action, but nothing to show on the board as they'll change ends. No score at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The first place Jets leading by two over Miami and as first place at risk as New England has won. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air, on land, and sea. Today, the United States Marine Corps celebrates 210 proud years of history. History that will be remembered for that elite corps of men who made it, the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. He's Don Shula, the winningest coach in the NFL, admired and respected by millions. Sure, winning is important on the field, but winning is also important in the home, in the community. The National Football League is concerned not only about professional football, but they're also concerned about you and I in the community. Contrary to what people believe, a lot of good things do happen in Miami. Uh, it's, a, it's a city where people have come, they've migrated there and uh, they've been able to establish a new life. Uh, families that have been broken have been able to get it back together. There have been community services such as United Way that have been able to help these people get back on track and, and to make it and to start a new life and to realize that dream that they had when they came to Miami. That's why I have such faith in United Way. It gives to all different types of families regardless of race, creed, or color. It's there to help the needy and that's what's important to me. This message furnished by the National Football League. No score after the first quarter. Dick, I have a question for you. What do Marino's arm, Reggie Roby's leg, and Mark Duper's body have in common? Other than anatomical. <laughs> <laughs> All insured by Lloyd's of London. Marino wouldn't tell us how much he's insured his arm for, but Duper's insured his body for 1.4 million and Roby his leg for a quarter of a million with Lloyd's of London. O'Brien opening the second quarter looking for Al Toon. That was a second and four play. Did you ever think about insuring parts? Now I wouldn't even ask you that question. <laughs> insure, insure this body? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> there are the first quarter numbers. No yards rushing for the Dolphins. Only 15 for McNeil and the Jets who had the ball nine and a half minutes to five and a half but really didn't do much with it they had the 41 yard field goal that was a attempt that was the closest that any team came to scoring big play third and four fifth defensive back in for miami johnny hecker 
Hector. Fumble at the 42-yard line. Who's got it? Miami. Alex Moyer recovers for the Dolphins. Hector, the man who's going to carry that ball into the into the line. Watch the block here by Shields as he loops out of there to try and make room. A little delay on the play here. And Hector will come back against the grain. Here he is, back against the grain. Let's see if we can see what happened to the football. Right there, stripped out. Kim Bocamper, 58, pulled that ball right out of his arms. And Alex Moyer, 54, alertly hopped on it. Now that's five fumbles. The second recovered by Miami, and Marino changing his play at the line of scrimmage from the 43. Through the hands of Mark Clayton, down at the 42 of the Jets. You know, it's a remarkable story. Here is Clayton and Mark Duper last year between them. Clayton set an NFL record 18 touchdowns. Duper added eight. That's 26 touchdowns. Kurt Sohn, who hadn't caught a pass in his NFL career, has three for the Jets. He has one more than the Marks boys together this year. Well, it's a little bit fair to, to talk about Duper that way. Been gone for a long time, but Clayton has not had much of a year either. I'll tell you, Marino has to be thrilled to have the two of them back in tandem. Clayton, 46 catches to lead the club, but only one for a touchdown. Tony Nathan, he has about 10 yards. What a hole up the middle. Let's go to NFL 85 and Bob Costas. Dick, overtime at the Vet in Philly. From their own one-yard line, the Eagles go to the air. Mike Quick makes the catch. The two defenders play Keystone Cops. There's nobody there to stop him. He will wave goodbye. 99 yards from Jaworski. In overtime, the Eagles win it. 23-17. Back to Dick and Merlin. We'll talk about big plays, 99 yards, and the Eagles win an OT against Atlanta. First down on the run by Tony Nathan of 10 yards. Marino wide open is Duper. And another first down at the 33 in front of Kerry Glenn. A chance to watch the Jets try to stunt to get in there and take some time. Watch Klecko looping to the outside and coming in. You'll get Gastineau coming inside, but neither one of them can get any pressure on Marino here as Marino just makes a little fake and then zips the ball over to Mark Clayton on the outside. And that's the kind of thing that they, that's Duper on the outside, not Clayton. That's the kind of thing that he's been waiting to do to Mark Duper all day. He was on his mark again. First down at the 35. Slashing to the 31, a gain of nearly five more is Lance Mel, number 56 in the middle of that Jets defense. Veteran from Penn State made the tackle, and Don Shula yesterday said, oh, what a job Mel has done. It's just the focal point of that entire defense. He's always on the ball. Such a thinking quarterback, and I think that's the best way to describe the man. Does not have the overpowering physical skills of some linebackers in the league, but is so smart that he is a tremendous leader for this Jet defense. Right in the head of that opposing quarterback, Marino, in their chess game. Oh, most intercepted by Charles Jackson. The Jets outside linebacker had drifted back and the ball was right in his miss, but drilled by Marino and he just couldn't bring it home. A couple of things to watch on this play. Watch the battle between the nose tackle Klecko and Stevenson and then as we turn it loose, watch the swing motion of Marino. Looks like a dancer in there as he waits for the snap. Here he is. Now Klecko just getting locked up by Marino or by Stevenson. Stevenson so far I think in looking at that battle in the trenches is winning the war in this first quarter. And we'll track that through the course of the afternoon. 13 minutes left, scoreless first half. On third and six, Marino, a rare sack, is down at the 43, and look who's got him, Joe Klecko, number 73. Do you think Klecko heard me? <laughs> there is also a flag downfield, a penalty downfield, but Klecko 
collecting Marino as he went in there. And we mentioned the injury. And the penalty will go against Miami. Unusual offensive interference, I think, against Duper. Holding number 85, uh, offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. That'll bring up fourth down. Only the ninth time that Marino's been sacked this year. Joe Klecko coming off the left side on Foster, and he just drove around Roy Foster. Marino with nowhere to go up inside, and you see him moving kind of sluggishly. We mentioned that thigh bruise, deep thigh bruise. It's going to hurt his mobility. Marino practiced only twice this week. Didn't work out till Friday with the club. So Reggie Roby in the punt for the third time in this first half. Townsell back at the 10. goes into the end zone and the Jets will play it from the 20. Townsell threw a good block on one of the early <laughs> Miami Robert Dolphins. So well. He put him on the ground very well. Timeout 12:35 left in the half. Behind this wall, research and behavior modification has been completed. The result? Escort GT. A startling transformation of the world's best-selling car. Driven by a new multi-port fuel-injected engine. And built to perform, no matter how the road turns. Ford Escort GT. The power of behavior modification. Get 8.8 .8 financing on 4 and 5-speed manual transmission Ford Escorts now. You're not just another face along the way to another place. Where are you headed today, Private uh, Zaleski? Home. Home. It's one of our most popular destinations. You're the pride of United's friendly sky. Thank you, sir. So before you go, my friend, we want you to know, my friend, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly sky. You must have been starving. We've got a great mess hall here. Don't worry, son. Yours will grow back. We're giving you everything we can. And we've got more to give along the way. Private Zaleski? Yes, sir. You're home. You're not just flying. I'm home. You're flying. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that crisp, clean taste. This Bud's for you. And by Apple Computer, makers of the Macintosh and Apple II families of personal computers. On the touchback, as we see the last signs of daylight, the entire field covered in shadows now. The Jets from their 20. No score. 12.35 left first half. Freeman McNeil. Oh, it's a nice piece of running there by McNeil. Let's go back to the punt by Roby and the block by Townsell. Give you a chance to see it. And as we watch it come down the field, you're going to have a chance to watch. Ellie, here, just hang on. Whoa, right there. There is the shot. Now, that's... That's so well looking up at the ball and look at Townsell just leveling him as he had his head turned around. What he's trying to do is keep him from downing that ball. It's a smart play on special teams by Jojo Townsell. Al Toon has another catch and he's out of bounds at the 34. So Toon, the rookie from Wisconsin who did not sign until the season had begun. He's in there for Kurt Sohn who is ill and Toon has three catches and 57 yards. Well, we talked about the holdouts for Miami. The two starting tackles, Powell and McElroy held out for the Jets and they were devastated as you remember in their first game. Toon and McElroy and Powell all came into camp. His fortunes have been different since that time. First down at the 34, McNeil. And he has almost eight on first down, and that's the kind of yardage that 
McNeil was chewing up in the first meeting a month ago on first down, giving the Jets always a good position on second and short. You see the big pad bulging there at, at the sides of his midriff. Very heavy and large pads to try and protect those ribs. It's the 12th rib that's injured for McNeil, but he has played extremely well with that injury. The so-called floating rib, the smallest bottom rib. McNeil has a first down at the 45-yard line as he picks up four more. He started today with 945 yards. There's that tandem of Gastineau and Klecko. Last time we saw them, Merlin was at home against Seattle when they were blowing kisses to the, uh, the screen, the television screen in the stadium. I'm sure Mark Gastineau and Klecko, if they've been watching all the publicity the refrigerator's been getting, and maybe <laughs> they'd love to have their chance. Yeah, the insiders say that they've been practicing on a play that has them both in the backfield. Whoa! But McNeil breaks the tackle, and he's got seven yards on first down. So three first down plays. McNeil's slow getting up, however. He gained seven on the first first down carry, then eight, and now seven on this first down. Very often the way to judge a great back is by the kind of yardage he makes after he has stopped the first time. Runs right into a pile, but doesn't give up. Just looks like a cue ball in there. Bounce, 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 all the way down, eight yards, on what looked like a nothing play. 12 out of 20 games, over 100. Johnny Hector replaces him. It's Hector who fumbled the last time he carried, not this time. He has a first down at the Miami 41. Meanwhile, in San Diego, Bob Thomas has kicked the 34-yard field goal, and the Chargers, in the middle of the second quarter, have a three-point lead over the Raiders. Chargers weren't anxious to play against the Raiders, knowing how angry they were about being embarrassed last week in Seattle, but, hey, they're holding their own. McNeil being worked on by Bob Reese, the trainer, with Joe Klecko standing on to check. Reggie McElroy there as well. On first down, O'Brien. Oh, wide open, but no good. Al Toon was open at the 30. The pass was short. I think McNeil's all right, and this Miami de defense has been hurt not only by the running game, but also by the play of their corners. Their corners have been chewed on the last few weeks, and the Jets have gone after those cornerbacks repeatedly here early in this game. Yeah, I like about McNeil is that he has a fondness for young people. He really identifies well with the young children and old things, too. He loves old cars and old movies. His favorite actor is Gary Cooper. His favorite movie is Shane. It's an interesting combination. Second and ten. McNeil. And they were waiting for him at the 40, a gain of only one. Doug Betters around the ankles for the tackle. I think O'Brien may have been confused on that play, and O'Neal McNeil is doing something with his helmet, saying he couldn't hear the audible or something. It looked like the play was broken. They just flipped it back to McNeil. Not much there. So a pass situation, third and nine. Dolphins bring in an extra defensive back. The Jets counter with three wide receivers. O'Brien going to use his second time out, apparently. What's he saying? Something about the football? I don't know. Oh, Miami. Miami. That's interesting. The Dolphins call time. You won't see that often. Maybe they didn't have the right people on the field. And Chuck Studley there with Don Shula motioning for a couple of men to come to the sideline. Well, we wondered why they had called a timeout earlier. Apparently, they only had 10 defensive players on the field earlier when they called the timeout. But one of the complicated things, there are so many substitutions going on and off the field now that several teams, including the Jets, are signaling with one person to the huddle to say, here's the, here's the situation. You know you're supposed to come out or you're supposed to stay in. And someone else is signaling the play or the defense. Don Shula played for the blue streaks of John Carroll University and in 1951 joined the Cleveland Browns and still credits Paul Brown as the man who influenced him early. He said, that's when I learned you brought your helmet and your notebook to practice. Paul Brown, a teacher, and Shula is that uh, 
consummate leader. I mean, he can be tough when he has to be tough. See, there's a more and more of a sensitive side to him, don't you think, where he seemed to be almost too tough at times in the past? Well, there certainly is. And the other, the other thing I like about him, tremendous loyalty. For example, that's John Sandusky, the offensive line coach that he's talking with the dark glasses. 22 years in the NFL. Sandusky, and a lot of that has been with Shula in Baltimore and also here. How about Kyle Tassif? Tassif, uh, the backfield coach, has been with uh, Shula back to his college days at John Carroll. They played at Cleveland together in the NFL, and Tassif still on his staff. Well, he's got a couple of uh, other gray beards on there. Mo Scary has been around 20 years in the NFL, and Tom Keene, 22 years in the NFL. So uh, this may be, with the exception of Dallas, and I don't know how it would work out, the most experienced coaching staff in the NFL. And you saw that graphic earlier. Landry, Shula, just nose and nose as they battle atop the all-time uh, winning list. And that figures you, know, you keep your team together. Third and nine. Down the middle. Townsell to the five-yard line. JoJo Townsell. What a beautifully timed throw by O'Brien and Townsell with a tough catch. We're seeing Townsell because Kurt Sohn has been sick. He, was, he fell sick just before the game. And look at that great protection. Everyone stacked on the line of scrimmage. Tom Sell just using his speed to get in between those two safeties. Finally knocked down by number 43, Bud Brown. But they put it down just outside of the four-yard line. First and goal. Deepest penetration by either team with 8.26 left in the second quarter. McNeil. He fumbled. But the ball was whistled dead. No fumble. The ball had been whistled dead. Very Robin. nearly the sixth fumble of this first half. Robin Senline had pounced on that ball in the end zone, and that would have been a touchback out to the 20, and, and uh, Dolphins ball. They get a reprieve on that one. It'll go back almost to the original line of scrimmage. It appeared that McNeil was down, and they twisted it out of his grasp. I think the whistle had blown. I, if there, he was not yet on the ground, but I think they had blown the whistle. Tony Page, he Ooh. gets only a yard, and that Dolphin defense tough inside. It'll be third and goal. And here comes the refrigerator. Here comes, wait a minute, Gastineau and Klecko both coming onto the field. We're going to have... Uh, double freezer or re <laughs> what would you call the two of them in the backfield Dick well we'll see how they do first so Gastineau he'll line up as a wing and Klecko as an up back there you see Gastineau lined up on the right side with Klecko and Freeman McNeil third and goal and it doesn't work McNeil is stacked up like Kurt Stone, not Stone, but Mickey Schuler may have hurt his thumb on that last play. Schuler very slow leading the field, but let's go back and look at Klecko and Gastineau. Gastineau in motion. They're both going to block inside, but great penetration on the inside. Send line 52, the man who got in there first. 53, Brophy also in on the top of that stack. Leahy has come into the ball game to try a field goal, his second of the day. It'll be from outside the 10, so this one uh, not much more than an extra point for the first points of the game. 21-yard attempt. And the Jets have three. But the Dolphins, with a moral decree in stopping the Jets, first and goal at the four, and it was fourth and goal from the four. Shula had been victimized last week by a similar situation up in New England. A flea flicker off this kind of formation. Gastineau coming in motion. Klecko trying to block inside. Gastineau actually hit Shula, his own man. <laughs> and that's why, that's why Shula was grabbing his hand. Out of it all, the Jets lead at three to think. 
coming, and they're tough to beat. The 86 Ford Rangers, even tougher to beat this year. Its V6 engine is the most powerful of any small pickup. And there's Ranger's new super cab that carries up to five people or extra cargo. Also new this year is Ranger's new electric touch drive that lets you shift from two-wheel to four-wheel drive on the fly. See the tough to beat 86 Ford Rangers now. Get 8.8 .8 financing on 86 Ford Ranger now. This bug's for all that you do. Clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. You make America work and this for you. Six minutes and four seconds remaining first half. Three nothing. Leahy and the Jets on a 21 yard field goal. Lorenzo Hampton, speedy rookie from the University of Florida. In the end zone, and he will not run yet. Well, <laughs> as a rookie is wont to do, a bit of a hesitation, he'll take the touchback. Let's go back to what the Dolphins thought was a fumble prior to the field goal. You see Bob Brzezinski right here on the left-hand side. Brzezinski, the man, is going to be employed in the play, and right in here in the middle of this stack, it's Freeman McNeil. Now, McNeil is going to twist out of there. Maybe we can stop it at the critical moment. Now, oh, stop it right there. Stop it right there. Now, there's no way he can get his knees on the ground because his back is to the ground. And watch the football pop out of his hands here as he tries to twist toward the goal line. Now, unless the whistle had been blown, I think that's a fumble, Dick. First down Miami at the 20. Marino on a screen. Gilper. A 20-yard gain for Mark Duper. It looked like a screen, and then he threw long over that screen to Duper. I think he has the option on that play. Marino has great vision. And even though the timing on this play is a little awkward, he is able to get that ball downfield. And, of course, that's the kind of play that these two teamed up so often on last year. Duper, by the way, is not playing at 100%. He is still injured. He's coming back off that injury even before he wanted to, in a sense. He's not running full speed. 20 yards for Mark Duper, who's now, of course, officially uh, Mark Super Duper, had his name changed, and Duper Jr. has Mark Super Duper as his tag as well. Anchored the NCAA champion 100-meter relay at Joe Delaney, the Great star with Kansas City was on that same Northwest Louisiana State team. Both football and track. The late Delaney. Going to Duper! Touchdown! the game of football is that we live in a seven-day life cycle you can die one week and be born the next that long bomb might well have helped to ignite this Miami team that have been playing so poorly over the past few weeks yeah certainly Duper's return has brought back life to the body Rose's to try the extra point Miami leads 
seven to three. Duper, auspicious return. Has 136 yards and a touchdown in the first half, and Miami enjoys the lead. We can help put people together. Hey, I got an idea. us at American Express, building one worldwide nerve center was a dream come true. Finding the communications and information systems that could grow with us might have been a nightmare. We chose AT&T. You don't trust your dream to just anyone. Whether it's telephones, information systems, long distance services, or computers. The right In the past, you saw a big Ford 4x4 pickup carry a Chevy pickup up this monster mountain of boulders. But now we're going to top ourselves by carrying a Chevy and towing a Dodge pickup up the same mountain. Because this year, Ford has the most powerful lineup of V8 engines, gas and diesel of any pickup. And only Ford has independent front suspension for ground-grabbing traction. No wonder they're America's best-selling full-size pickups. The best-built American trucks are built for tough. I thought this demonstration was just advertising, but Denerex tingles, tells me it's doing more. Regular head and shoulders, no tingle. Both have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine and conditioner, too. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. Now you can relieve and inflame hemorrhoidal tissue with the oxygen action of Preparation H. It accelerates absorption of pure oxygen to help shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissue, as it often relieves pain and itch for hours. Preparation H with oxygen action. Game day. The NFL 85 locker room. Meet Ahmad Rashad. His feet is the glamour side of the street. He'll get exclusive interviews from a man who really knows his football. We gotta get him his own dressing room. Ahmad Rashad. He's been drafted by the team who's putting the fun back in football. You bet he's called Mr. Here. He stirred the pot. This orange ball is alive with Duper, back-to-back -back catches, 20 yards, then 60 yards to go the full 80, and the lead 7-3. to three. Raves kids it down to Humphrey. Bobby Humphrey at the 15. And he stops short of the 25, and flags are flying. Ron Davenport with a tackle for Miami, and Jim Jensen was there as well. We'll let the officials sort it out. And then we'll go back and let you look. Let's go back right now and watch that great play. Tight coverage on the outside. But look at the good protection here for Marino and how quickly he unloads that football. Way out in front. And Marino simply runs out there and catches up with it. Bobby Jackson, we said it early, bump and run. Jackson did not play last week with a leg injury. And it's obvious here, does not have full speed. Johnny Lynn, 29, gets there as he crosses the goal line, but it was too late. 7-3, to three, and on the penalty for illegal use of the hands, the Jets will start at the 12. 5.27 left in the half. O'Brien to Schuler. And the tight end is out of bounds at the 25 with a first down. 13 yards for Schuler, who now has 40 catches on the year. He started today second in the uh, tight end derby to Todd Christensen of the Raiders. He's had a big season. And you could see that tape on his finger. I talked to him about that injury. It's in the upper joint of that thumb. And he said that the bone jumped right out of the joint and popped through the skin. He said it was the blood that scared him when he got that thing hurt. I didn't miss, he didn't miss uh, more than a couple of plays. Amazing. Freeman McNeil slamming forward for close to five yards. Glenn Blackwood and Mark Brown, a couple of the killer bees in that Miami defense with the tackle. And one thing that that big play from Duper does is ignites this crowd. The decibel level jumped instantly. That could become a problem for these Jets later on. This is traditionally a noisy crowd anyway. They've been kind of hushed the last few weeks because of the open performance. O'Brien with the first, uh, second down and five. McNeil, that's going to be short of a first down to about the 33-yard line. Jackie Ship and Glenn Blackwood with a stop. Kim Bocamper playing in there. We're keeping an eye on him. Has had a neck injury. 
a painful pinched nerve that has kept him sidelined. Also a rib injury earlier in the year. But they like to have him in that lineup. That means they can keep Charles on the nose. Looks like they've got four defensive linemen in there right now to put pressure on O'Brien. set up the field goal very nearly picking off another but was off the sidelines out of play. Kurt Sohn unable to go in this game we mentioned because of his sickness has given Townsell a chance he's not been seen much of in the last few weeks. Great acrobatic catch here but did not get both feet down inbounds. The official right there we can't see it from this sideline. Looked awfully close for what we could see. It did. It must have been the first foot down. Must have hit the sideline. So Jennings to punt, and Miami will get the ball with plenty of time remaining in this first half. Vigorito at the 22. Feel like a punter. You could catch that one, Dick. Guy Bingham, the snapper. Jennings to the 21. 30, 42-yard line. Good return by Vigorito. Billy Griggs made the tackle. 46-yard punt, 21-yard return for Vigorito. They've missed his talents on special teams. Well, let's run down all the scores for you in case you're just joining us. Cincinnati, a share of first place, 27-10 win against Cleveland, while Pittsburgh beat Kansas City 36-28. It's the Steelers and Bengals tied for first in the Central. Giants beat the Rams, only the second loss for Los Angeles. The Bears remain unbeaten, 24-3 against the Lions. 27-3 Seattle, a winner at New Orleans. Ron Davenport, Lance Mel, and Kyle Clifton with a tackle. Three-yard gain. The rest of the finals. Tampa Bay's first win, a shutout over the Cardinals. New England with a chance for first place should the Jets lose here in Miami today. Green Bay wins at Minnesota. Buffalo shuts out Houston 20-0. And in overtime on a 99-yard play, Philadelphia beats Atlanta 23-17. Whoops, Fleco jumps offside. A smart quarterback knows how to use the snap count. Joe Klecko has traditionally liked to try and jump on the snap count. And he got burned on it right here. You see him right in the center there, angled off in that crab-like position. <laughs> and he, he's disgusted with himself on that play. Pushed Dwight Stevenson to the ground. The late games today, Dallas leading 3-0 near halftime at Washington. 13-10, the Raiders have taken the lead at San Diego. And here at 7-3, Miami leading the New York Gents. And Miami with a five-yard penalty, second and two at the 50. Davenport and he's written out of bounds shy of the 50 yard line Davlin Mullen Lance Mel excellent defensive pursuit from the Jets on that play one thing that Bud Carson has these Jets doing is he has them scrambling and kicking and biting watch how many green jerseys end up out in front of Ron Davenport you see them coming right here. That's Mel inside. Bobby Jackson, 40. Davlin Mullen, 20. And 94, Gil Bow. Three men on the tackle and another one or two right behind. But Carson, who uh, didn't work out at Kansas City, John Makovic let him go. He's a strong-minded defensive coach, but obviously a very good one. Third down and three. Clayton. And a groan from most of the 70,000 plus here in Miami is it just missed connections. Well, you've got to believe that they figure they're going to come back and test Jackson again. They outran him once with Duper. Now they try it with Clayton. 
He was barely able to get out in front of that one. And Dan Marino under pressure just fired that ball out quickly. Almost had it out there for the receiver. So not much time spent by Miami in that possession. So it's the Jets with two timeouts left who will have adequate time to try to generate a drive. 227 showing on the clock. Townsell at the 10. Run into Roby. Ball down at the 23, but I believe the Dolphins, yes, sir, roughing the kicker. That's a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, they could call it either way the roughing or the running into. They gave a personal they foul. Gave signal. A personal foul, then they'll give him the big one. Running into the kicker, number 84, defense, five yards, oh, automatic first give him the five yards. One of the things that is creating havoc for the special teams of, New, of the New York Jets is they've lost their three, three of their top special teams players. And it really is making the job much more difficult for Larry Pasquale and his special teams. That's Pasquale right there with a the hat on, walking along, and he's, boy, he's dejected. You make, you try and make the big play there defensively, and what you end up doing is handing an opportunity right back to these Dolphins. There are the tackles by Barber, Munger, and, and Breckner, Munger and Breckner, and that's, they have 34 between them. The rest of the team has less than, the, less than that. I mean, it's amazing. And Munger is hurt. Barber is uh, on injured reserve. And Breckner was cut. cut week. So they are short. First down, Miami. Complete to veteran Nat Moore, his first catch of the afternoon. And it's a first down at the 34, a dozen yards for Moore. And almost as much as anything we've seen this day, that's an indication that some of the confidence and some of the timing is oozing back into this Dolphin team. Perfect timing pattern on the sideline. Great delivery before the, before the move on the sideline by Moore. That ball was in the air and perfectly delivered. Approaching the two-minute timeout, there's 2.06 left in this first half. Tony Nathan, short yardage to the 31. And the two-minute timeout. Two minutes remaining in the first half here at Miami's Orange Bowl. And the Dolphins lead the Jets 7-3. places serve billions of burgers and oh yes they also serve chicken like chicken nuggets but it's hard to do chicken right part time at kentucky fried chicken our nuggets have our secret blend of 11 herbs and spices so they taste great in fact people who said they never tried kentucky nuggets and mcdonald's chicken nuggets rated ours higher on taste so get your nuggets from the chicken experts anything else could be a bum steer kentucky fried chicken we do chicken right Using an Apple II is very easy. The only hard part is getting your kid away from it. You see, Apples are the leading computers in schools, so even though you bought it to help you work at home, your kid will want to use it for his own homework. Of course, if all else fails, there's one last thing you can try. Get him an Apple of his own. Bob Costas, NFL 85. Take one. Oh. Bob. Catch Bob Costas on NFL 85. Sundays. 
As they break huddle, watch number 79, John Geisler. He's gone the entire first half. He had a knee operation. Well, it'll be two weeks tomorrow, and he's back days. in there. Twelve days ago, operated on. That's that orthoscopic surgery. And boy, it's changed the way we think about surgery these days. Two minutes left. Dolphins leading seven to three. Play action. Great protection. And Johnny Lynn picking off Clayton. Incomplete. It'll be third down and seven when we return. First, let's go to NFL 85. All right, Dick. The Raiders lead the Chargers 13-10, but watch this play. Fouts tries to hit Chandler. West can't catch it. Otis McKinney sends his regards. Make it Charlie Joyner, not West Chandler. And then Rod Martin, who just happened to be walking by, kicked Charlie in the face for good measure. A typical act of sportsmanship. Back to Dick and Merlin. <laughs> yeah, the Raiders seem to have that one well in their grasp, that award each year. Joe Rose, the tight end, and a good receiver in there on third and seven. 154 remaining in the half. Wide open Nathan. He's got a first down at the 20. Lance Mel with a tackle, but too late. The Dolphins, a clock running, have a big first down. Down in the trenches, Marino's troops are giving him time to throw the football. They're holding that jut rush at bay, and Marino's taking advantage of it with passes like that. Nathan knew where that first down was. He was diving for it. Nathan from Alabama. Marty Lyons, uh, also Alabama, the defensive lineman for the Jets, is the godfather of Nathan's uh, daughter. Marino, and he had a man close enough, Woody Bennett, that that is not grounding, as Gastineau thought there should be a penalty against Miami. Gastineau flying off the ball, well ahead. Let's go back to the line of scrimmage. Look how quickly Gastineau is off the line. Cleveland Green doesn't get a hand on him. Gastineau misses the first grab, and Marino is unloading it. I don't blame him. Gastineau saying it's intentional grounding. The official not agreeing with his case. Ball at the 20. It is second and 10. Gastineau, 88 and a half sacks in 98 games. He has eight this year in the first nine. for Dan Johnson, the tight end. And he had a step, but the pass a little too tall. Third and 10. That's one of those that the touch just hasn't quite returned to. Marino last year, along with these Dolphins, had such a fantastic run. It seemed like every time they threw the ball, whether it was into coverage or, or into a receiver who, who didn't have a chance at the ball, they found a way to catch it, found a way to get it into the end zone. Remember Chet Franklin, the uh, Raiders defensive coach, said he's so hot that if a receiver was running downfield with his trousers loose that Marino would just throw it up and it drop right in there for a completion. He, he had that kind of success. Hasn't been that way today, but they appear to be getting it together in this ball game. in the end zone by Davlin Mullen and a big play for the Jets. Joe Rose was the intended receiver and I think Marino was guessing Rose going inside. Rose broke outside. Well, and just as things seem to be getting comfortable, Marino drops the ball to one of the guys in the green shirts. And right now, some celebration going on on the Jets sideline as they've got the football back in their hands. And they've managed to avoid some points here that could have been very costly. Exactly a minute left in the half. Is there any more difficult words to digest for a quarterback than I've been intercepted in the end zone? That close to scoring only to have the other team get the ball out on the 20. Let's see what the Jets do in the final 60 seconds. A 7-3 Miami lead. Brian down the middle and a flag is down. Pass intended for Townsell and we may have holding against the Jets. Doug Better is working on Marvin Powell over on that side. It was 
That'll take it back to the 10 yard line. Doug Better is motioning from the sidelines. You want us to accept the penalty, and Shula say you bet. Holding number 79, offense, still first down. Marvin Powell called, but we've been keeping an eye on the pressures on the quarterback, and so far the, the Jets have been pressured four times on the quarterback. They've been knocked down zero times. They've been sacked two times. Miami's been pressured seven times, knocked down twice at, after the ball was thrown, and sacked once. Penalty yards. Dolphins always, well, they've been the leader in least penalized for a decade. Freeman McNeil out to the 19-yard line. That'll leave the Jets 11 yards short of a first down. The clock running 43. Jets will go without the huddle. They're quickly to the line. It's McNeil again. He's got it close to a first down, then he's hit right at the 30. It depends where they mark it. I think he's got the first down. The ball appeared to be over the 30-yard line. And with that yardage, McNeil becomes the first running back in the NFL to hit the 1,000-yard mark this year. 21 seconds left, timeout. You begin with raw steel. with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor-sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men. For the medal to be Marines. It is amazing that Freeman McNeil on a second and 20 goes two runs and gets the first down. He's been doing that all year long. What a weapon. Well, you have to look at the clock, though, and realize that Chuck Studley is thinking, I've got a lot of field to protect here, and he's thinking pass. He'll sacrifice some yards on the run here to eat that clock up. 67 yards rushing for McNeil to get him over the 1,000-yard mark. O'Brien... A rare time that he runs, and a flag is down in the Miami secondary. Clock stopped with a penalty 13 seconds. He might have a hold against the Dolphins. Mark Brown, the man who was blitzing on that play. O'Brien able to avoid him. There is the holding call against the, the Dolphins. I think that's one thing that O'Brien seems to do well. Once he decides to run, he runs pretty well, but it's that indecision. Do I run? How do I find Hold the opening place here? 49 defense and forced from the end of the run. Five yards, first down. Let's take a quick look at O'Brien. O'Brien's going to be pressured from the right side of your screen. There he is, Mark Brown. And once he decided to go up through there, he pulled that ball down and took off. He's got good speed and pretty good athletic ability going up through there, but it's that indecision time that has been critical for him. Two timeouts left for the Jets, but from their own 40-yard line, time running out. McNeil gets a good block and out of bounds at the Miami 43. Great block by number 65, Joe Fields, the general himself. McNeil again slow getting up on the far sideline. Joe Fields, of course, one of the center's one of the fine centers in the NFL. He led that screen to the outside and just buried one of those defensive backs. Pat Leahy would benefit from a following win, but with the ball at the Miami 43, that's uh, considerably out of his range, over 60 yards at the moment, and with only five seconds left, Merlin, uh, not certain that the Jets, even on a quick out, can uh, get that clock stopped in time for him to get in. We saw them do it once in Seattle with five seconds on. Let's see if they can do it again. Now they're gonna go for it. Well, that's it, the end of the half as O'Brien could not find a man open deep and the first half has come to an end. Miami on a 60-yard bomb. Marino to Duper leading 7-3. to three. These two teams coming into the day really going opposite directions and more or less living up to their nicknames before today's game. The Jets were flying high. The Dolphins were in a deep dive. 
But as they started this game, you could feel the emotional intensity, the level of the Miami Dolphins. Both teams excited. They struggled offensively. Not much happening, happening early. But Duper, Mark Duper's really been the difference for Miami so far in this game. Mark Super Duper. And here is that touchdown play as he beats Bobby Jackson at the line of scrimmage. And with his great speed, gets the step and a perfect throw by Marino. This is one of the things that Marino has not been able to do. With only one of those speed receivers in the ballgame, they have not been able to stretch defenses. Well, Duper is back. That's the good news. The bad news is that Marino later throws an interception in the end zone where Miami might have gone in front 14 to 3. Another look at the catch by Duper. Another great look at that play, and you're absolutely right, Dick. It's been a, a mixed review on that basis. But if you look on the scoreboard right now, the Dolphins do have the lead, 7-3. to three. They've got to feel very good about what they did in this first half. And Duper has been missed shortly. Four catches all year with his injury. He has four in the first half today and that big touchdown. Well, this sellout crowd at the Orange Bowl relaxing now. The Dolphins in a must-win situation, leading 7-3 to three as we switch to NFL 85. Hi again, everybody. Bob Costas back at our studios in New York, along with Pete Axtell, Ahmad Rashad is at the Orange Bowl in Miami, where the Dolphins lead the Jets 7-3 to at halftime today on the Marino touchdown pass to the reactivated Mark Duper. It covered 60 yards. Here is an interesting note. Last year, Duper and Clayton caught 26 touchdown passes between them from Marino. Now, partly because of the Dolphins' troubles, and in Duper's case, because of his injury, the two have caught just three Marino touchdown passes this year. That partly explains why the Dolphins are battling for their lives today. They're already two games back of the Jets in the AFC East as they lead 7-3 at halftime at the Orange Bowl. Dallas and Washington at RFK. Raphael Septien, a 40-yard field goal in the first quarter, and that's it. They've come to halftime, the score 3-0. The Raiders and the Chargers, 13-10 in favor of the Raiders. At halftime in that one, the Raiders are 6-3. They'd like to get a half-game jump on Denver in the AFC West. Denver plays at home tomorrow night against San Francisco. Fouts to West Chandler had been doubtful with a heel injury for a touchdown early for San Diego. Mark Wilson, 35 yards to the rookie Jesse Hester for one of the Raider touchdowns. They missed the point after following their second TD, and that could become a factor in the game as the Raider lead is three instead of four. Cincinnati and Cleveland today, and for the fourth consecutive time, the Bengals have won the Battle of Ohio. 27 to 10 was the final score in that one, and the Browns go to four and six. The Bengals go to five and five. Pittsburgh wins at Kansas City, 36-28, and the Chiefs, after a very promising start, have now lost six in a row. Chuck Knoll's team did it today with David Woodley at quarterback in place of the injured Mark Malone. It started badly for Woodley, under pressure. He throws this one right to Duran Cherry. He's picked off six this year. He brings this one back for a touchdown, 47 yards, and it's 7-0 Chiefs. But Woodley quickly atones on this 13-yarder to John Stallworth, who makes a fine catch, and the game is tied up at seven in the first quarter, and John Makovic seems to sense that worse things are to come. And here it is, John, just as you feared. A 71-yard punt return for a touchdown by the electrifying Lewis Lips. His second punt return for a TD this year. Ten touchdowns all told in ten weeks of play in this NFL season. This last play is worth looking at, even though it didn't really have an effect on the outcome. Woodley avoids the rush, throws the bomb for Stallworth. Watch this catch. The ball is batted up twice and flat on his back. The great veteran is able to make the catch, and it's part of the Steelers' 36-28 victory today over the Chiefs. The Giants came from behind and beat the Rams 24-19. The Rams were winning in this game 13-0 late in the second quarter. And at that point, well, Jeff Kemp was at quarterback because Dieter Brock had surgery this week because of kidney stones. So Brock was out and Kemp was in at quarterback for the Rams. And he had them in front 13-0 with time running out, as you see in the half, when Phil Simms scrambled through back across the field to Bobby Johnson. And then Johnson turned in a nifty run, a 36-yard TD, and they closed it to 13-7 at halftime. Joe Morris had another good day. Here he goes over from the one in the third quarter. The Giants have the lead 17-16. They led 24-16 in the fourth quarter when a crucial play occurred. Kemp will throw for Bobby Duckworth. He is hit. One foot comes down, out of bounds. John Robinson felt that he was shoved out of bounds, but the ruling is no catch, and you see how Robinson feels about that. They had to settle for a field goal. Later, a crucial play. A Kemp pass for Tony Hunter that was catchable was dropped. 
That could have led to a Rams score instead. The Rams lose for the second time this year, and the Giants go to 7-3, and three, and if... Washington should beat Dallas today, then uh, the Giants would be alone in first place in the NFC East. The Bears won again today. 24-3 is the final score in that ball game, so Chicago goes to 10-0. Refrigerator Perry didn't catch one or run with one today, although he did record a sack from his defensive tackle spot. Walter Payton for the fifth consecutive week and Matt Suey, each over 100 yards rushing in the game for the Bears. Seattle defeats New Orleans. 27 to 3 it was just 7 3 after three quarters then the seahawks exploded in the final period and this was part of it as the dave wilson pass and this is ruled a pass he's hit pops out of his hands into the arms of jacob green you recall he scored a touchdown and a fumble recovery against the jets a couple of weeks ago his second touchdown in his last three games and the seahawks very much alive in the afc west now at six and four win 27 to 3. Tampa Bay is a winner today over St. Louis, 16-0. After an 0-9 start, Tampa Bay, as predicted on the pregame show by Pete Axtelm, finally records a victory. New England has won five in a row, and they stay right behind the Jets in the AFC East. 34-15, a win over Indianapolis. Big play, Irving Fryer, 77-yard punt return for a TD. Green Bay rallies and defeats Minnesota, 27-17 the score there. Buffalo wins their second of the year and snaps Houston's winning streak at three. 20 to nothing the score in the rain at Buffalo. And Philadelphia on a 99-yard pass from Ron Jaworski to Mike Quick in overtime beats Atlanta 23-17 after almost blowing a 17-0 lead. And we close with a tragic note from the National Hockey League. Kelly Lindbergh, the goalie for the Philadelphia Flyers, who won the Vezina Trophy a year ago as the Flyers went to the finals against Edmonton, was involved in an automobile accident early this morning, and right now doctors say he is essentially brain dead and is being kept alive by a respirator. His family and some of his teammates are now conducting a bedside vigil. They will not decide until tomorrow at the earliest whether or not that life support equipment will be disconnected. NFL 85 halftime activities will continue after this from your local stations. Tonight on Amazing Story. We're actually watching TV from outer space. <laughs> and they're coming here. Coming tonight. And on Alfred Hitchcock. This is the role of my life! An actor's greatest part becomes a real killer. <laughs> then they murdered his family on the streets. Now he's fighting back. Streets of Justice, tonight. Nobody puts you in the middle of football action like the people at NFL Films, and nobody's hungrier to help aggressive growing companies like theirs than Atlantic. NFL Films teamed up with the Hungry Bankers right at the start. When our signals called for a major expansion, the Midlantic team provided the funding. And whatever financial play they run next, we'll help carry the ball. If you're playing to win, call the Hungry Bankers at Midlantic. We're pros. Hi, I'm Steve Wynn. And this is one of the beautiful suites in the Golden Nugget of Las Vegas, which, as everybody knows, is downtown. Nevertheless, you'd be amazed if you knew how many people think that this is uptown. Hi, Mr. Sinatra. I'm Steve Wynn. I run this place. You see, I get enough towels. Towels? Golden Nugget, Las Vegas, Atlantic City. The Politics of Cancer, a special report, Tuesday at 6. If you followed football in the 60s, there's no doubt you remember Joe Don Looney. Incredible talent, notorious rebel, and there are those who will tell you that there has never been an athlete with a more appropriate name than Joe Don Looney. Here's Bill McAtee. Serving the Big Ben country since 1947, this is KDLF Alpine, voice of the last frontier. I was looking through my eyes, through this face mask, with this helmet on, with these shoulder pads on. And I remember, boy, it was really hidden. And I thought, wow, I had to go sit down. What am I doing here? I felt real alone. And everything felt real strange to me. Joe Don Looney, perhaps the most enigmatic counterculture figure ever to play pro football, has come here to a far corner of West Texas to live out his vision of happiness. One of the most naturally gifted athletes to play the game, Looney's short, explosive career was checkered by erratic behavior and an inability to conform. 
An all-conference pullback at Oklahoma. He was thrown off the team after a fight with a coach. Then five NFL teams in five years through the mid-60s, as teams like Baltimore and Washington clamored for his talents, but wouldn't tolerate his free spirit. An example, the time Detroit coach Harry Gilmer asked Looney to bring in a play from the sideline. The deal was when I was in the game, I was to stay in the game, not to run messages. So I said, uh, you know, with a lot of deep insight and a lot of thought, I said, listen, Harry, if you want a messenger, you'll just have to send over for Western Union, because I ain't doing it. You may ask yourself, where does that highway go to? And you may ask yourself, am I right? Am I wrong? Did it ever bother you that a lot of people didn't understand you? Yeah, for a while, you know, it, because, look, I just didn't know who the hell I was. And it took somebody who knew who I was, knew who he was, to know who I was. And he showed me. That man, who Looney met in 1975, was Swami Muktanambi. Though Looney's house is hardly furnished, he has placed on each of his walls photographs of his spiritual mentor who died in 1982. After leaving pro football in 1969, Looney's odyssey of self-discovery took him around the world, from Southeast Asia to the drug world of South America. Now in isolation, Looney lives the introspective life of a mystic. Meditating most of the day in the house he has built, Looney is 60 pounds lighter and philosophically light years away from his days in the NFL. It's me. <laughs> Joe Don doesn't own a football. We threw mine back and forth. And as we talked, it became clear that the player no one seemed to understand now seems finally to understand himself. Gosh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for my football career. It wasn't what people wanted to be and not what I wanted to be, and that was uh, kind of a problem for a while, but what can you do? But there are a lot of people who would say that Joe Don Looney had a lot of talent. If he would have conformed just a little bit, run the plays with the other 10 guys, things would have been a lot better. What could be better than this? Hey, man, is this so bad for a guy who blew it all? Joe Don Looney, apparently at peace with himself in West Texas. NFL 85 halftime activities will continue. Please stay with us. If there is one movie to see this season, it is an early frost. TV Guide calls it a searing personal drama. This film triumphs. This is not an ordinary movie, and Early Frost tells you more about AIDS than many news stories or hysterical gossip can, says People magazine. You can't afford to miss an Early Frost Monday. Who says America has run out of opportunity? There are plenty out there, if you look for them. The people who built this country were doers, not doubters. Risk takers, seeking opportunities, not guaranteed. Today, I still see vast opportunities in hundreds of small to mid-sized companies whose entrepreneurial spirit and energy will continue to build America. At First Jersey Securities, we specialize in discovering such emerging growth companies for today's investors with vision. First Jersey Securities, come grow with us. The Politics of Cancer, a special report, Tuesday at 6. And we welcome you back to the Orange Bowl, ready for the second half, Miami leading 7-3. You talked about confidence at the start. Well, at Mark Duper, they pushed him into the lineup, and he gave him plenty in a hurry. There's no question about it. Marino loves to have the options available to him. When Duper is in the game, you've got to respect his speed. When you put speed on both of those outside receiver positions, you put a defense in a real bind, and you see the result of that today. They're able to get to Duper deep, running away from Bobby Jackson. Ready for the second half. Pat Leahy to kick it off. Lorenzo Hampton deep. That's a low line drive. And Hampton will bring it out. And he does not make it back to the 20-yard line. Hammered at about the 19. Devon Johnson, star of Miami Vice. And I know he's a 
had a busy week. He's not only acting but directing uh, an episode they're shooting here in Miami this week. I told us a few moments ago, feels like he's wearing five hats. He said you feel like the Marx Brothers all at the same time. Well, head coach and quarterback uh, concurrently. That's a big statistic, and of course the Jets have been one of the better teams in the league, counting the first half when they were two to one. Plus the Jets are a plus nine on the year. Miami, that's not like them. A minus six in that turnover table, and one of those an interception in the end zone the first half. Woody Bennett, a rare carry, gets a couple. His first carry, in fact, of the game. Let's look at the first half statistics. Well, it's down on the bottom, the Jets had the ball almost twice as much time but got only three points out of it and after virtually no rushing yardage in that first quarter the Jets have bounced back in that department but they have not been running consistently passing well, pretty even in that area you mentioned the turnovers Dick time of possession heavily in favor of the Jets second and nine for Dan Marino to Nathan short of the first down he was down on the knee couldn't get up in time and Lance Mel secured him two yards shy of a first down Barry Bennett in on Marino quickly but Marino showing you on that play that whip action with that arm and we talk about quick release and it gets to be almost a cliche <laughs> but believe me Marino has it the bad news for the Jets Kirk Springs injured very early in this game will not return they had both a shoulder and a thigh bruise and with Russell Carter at home injured as well that Jets deep secondary is really thin and that's tough when you're facing a man of Marino's talent Marino very upset here the play very slow coming in from Shula he's going to have to run if he's going to get it in 30 second clock is already at two seconds so Marino spends the timeout rather than taking the five yard penalty some might question that why not take the five yards and save the timeout it might be much more important later if you've got your mind all made up about small cars then you're watching the wrong commercial but if you'd like to learn about something special this new Mazda 3 for third and a short two for Marino play out and wide open is Bruce Hardy, the tight end. His first catch is a first down. 15 yards for Hardy. Kyle Clifton made the tackle for the Jets. Back in the third week of the season, the Dolphins shut out the Kansas City Chiefs, at that time the highest scoring team in the NFL. In the last six games since that time, they've been averaging giving up 26 points per game. Well, good news here for Dolphin fans with only three points on the board for the Jets in the first half. Now well, that defense of Miami really has been under some heat. Leading seven to three. Just underway second half. First down Miami. Bubble. And the Jets have recovered at the 34 yard line. Joe Klecko falls on the loose ball. They got Marino from the blind side. The blind side sack, and how many times we've seen it this year. Marino stepping forward, had his arm behind him. You'll see Klecko in the middle of your screen, number 90, 73, Gastineau goes in, Klecko goes all the way back around. The strip right there, and that's 55, Charles Jackson, that stripped the ball, and Klecko alertly jumped on that football, and the Jets, have not only stopped the Dolphins, but they have excellent field position. From the 34. O'Brien going for it all. And throws it away. Rocky Cleaver was deep downfield, the second tight end. Doug Better is applying pressure on quarterback O'Brien. I don't know whether O'Brien was throwing that one away or whether that blow to the leg just misdirected that pass. They've been trying to get him to know when to just throw that football away rather than take the sack. Last week he threw one up in the second deck in Indianapolis. That one may have been directed toward the sideline. Star at the University of California, Davis. He followed Mike Morosky. Morosky also graduated to the NFL. And it's too noisy. 
can't help but wonder why he doesn't turn and ask the official to call that timeout. So both quarterbacks use a timeout early in this third quarter. 7-3 Miami. Look what just popped up. The new Sony Handycam. A video camera recorder that sees and hears every move. Just point and shoot and catch all the fun. It's so tiny it fits in one hand. The new Sony Handycam. Where will it pop up next? Life's not always easy. And no one said it's fair. Nobody is better prepared to help you manage the new health care than an old friend. But you can find some peace of mind when you hold on to the one that cares. Carry on with the life you're living. Carry the caring card. The Blue Cross and Blue Shield card. If you think there's no room for improvement in small trucks today, then go let the dog out. Because you wouldn't want to know about Mazda's new Cab Plus. A small truck that's really big inside. Introducing Mazda's all-new B2000 Cab Plus. One of the roomiest cabs in its class includes room back here for two adults, plus unusual levels of quietness, ride, and handling. It's also the lowest-priced extended cab truck by hundreds. You wouldn't know anybody who would want something this special, would you? When AIDS hits home... AIDS is, is that disease what does a family do? A world movie premiere you can't miss. An early frost Monday. Well, that graphic is a product of our own wondering why the Jets aren't running more. But actually, it's almost 50-50. It seems as if they've passed a lot more than they have. Second and ten. Wide open is the tight end Schuler. And he fights his way through two Dolphins to a first down at the 23. 12 yards. Tremendous second effort by Mickey Schuler on that play. Bobby Hammond is signaling in the formation on that play. He's telling people who should come out and who should stay in. On the other side of uh, Coach Walton was Zeke Bratkowski, who's the quarterback coach. He was signaling in. There he is with the headset on. He would be signaling in the play. It's already gone in from uh, Bretkowski to O'Brien, the quarterback. Raiders and Chargers tied early in the third quarter. Fake by O'Brien, and down he goes. Brown was the first man there, along with Bo Camper, but a flag is down. Yeah, we'll see what that penalty is, but first, an update. Let's go to Bob Costas, NFL 85. All right, Dick, at San Diego, Dan Fouts looks for Lionel Little Train James. The play covers 37 yards. The train doesn't quite make it to the depot, derailed at the 7, and they settle for a field goal that ties it up at 13 in the third. Out of the San Diego Chargers, the top offensive team in the NFL, and a tie now with the Raiders. It was offside against Miami. Mike Charles, number 71, offside. Right in the center there, just getting an extra jump, and it negated a sack by Mark Brown. His mom had her 62nd birthday yesterday. That would have been a nice present for her. First and five. A quickie incomplete to Toon, working uh, on Judson. That ball tipped by Kim Bocamper, number 58. That's that quick pass to the outside, and Bo Camper just showing some good reaction. Jumped up, got a finger on it. That's a, just a little stop pattern to tune, and he has been very effective running with the football after he's caught it today. And Judson, that corner, playing him with plenty of room, and uh, you could just see that one setting up as Judson was about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. Second and five. Jets deep in Miami's end. Dolphins lead seven to three. sack of O'Brien at the 20. Oh, this Dolphin defense is playing perhaps its top game of the year. 
That's the 38th time this season that Jets quarterbacks have been dumped. The third time today that they've gotten to him. There's Studley in the center of your screen with Kozlowski. We showed you signals from the Jets side and now from the Dolphins side as they try to match wits. The Jets looking to get some points on the board. Fourth down, in comes Pat Leahy and the field goal team. You could sense the rise in the noise level here in the stadium had to be extremely difficult for them to hear the signals on the line of scrimmage. O'Brien, I think, feeling the pressure of the moment, really threw that football with a lot of velocity. It just ricocheted out of the hands of Toon. This will be a 37 or 38-yard attempt. Leahy is one for two today, missed from 41, connected from 21. It'll be a 37-yard attempt. No good. He missed to the left after missing wide right early. So the Marino fumble is not a costly one. The Jets cannot capitalize. Rise and shine, catch your line, catch the limit here. Now you're talking fishing, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is smoking here. Stroh's, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking Stroh's. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. I have to take advantage of my travel time. And Radio Shack's portable computers with built-in programs help me do just that. And they make this year's best Christmas gifts because they're on sale right now at Radio Shack. You can give one to your young scholar and to your busy wife. And, of course, they're perfect for everyone who travels. <laughs> sale price portable computers for Christmas only at Radio Shack. Now, Selsun Blue, the number one doctor-recommended dandruff shampoo, introduces a new extra conditioning formula. It leaves my hair looking so soft and manageable. It has five conditioners, including aloe, that leaves hair in beautiful condition. And Selsun Blue extra conditioning formula contains the anti-dandruff ingredient doctors recommend most. No leading brand gets rid of dandruff flaking or itching better. New Selsun Blue extra conditioning formula controls dandruff and leaves hair in beautiful condition. America's favorite pastime returns to NBC as the nation's top rollers battle it out for Bowler of the Year honors. Join Jay Randolph and Bowler of the Decade Earl Anthony for the PBA Fall Tour next Saturday on NBC. Like all kickers, you walk alone. There are a lot of uh, valleys. A little head shaking going on there. Larry Pasquale. I know that's awful hard for him. Boy, that's a naked position. Dick. First down, Miami at the 20. Almost intercepted by the Jets as they had a crowd around intended receiver Mark Clayton. Rich Miano, one of the backup defenders in to help out. Number 36 and another Jet injury. That would be costly. We've mentioned the Jets' backs have been hurt coming into this game and it's Bobby Jackson I think number 40 that's on the ground and again I think he's hurt by one of his own teammates Reno took a looking just as he released the football this is the part that uh, you say where'd I get all those welts when you wake up on Monday morning Mark Gastineau now, no, Gilbo. Gilbo. the linebacker blitzing from the right side and there's Jackson heading to the sideline with Bob Reese the trainer I tell you the Jets have got to wonder when this defensive backfield of theirs is going to get a rest from injuries. Looks like he may have a stinger, just a little pinched nerve. He's shaking out that left arm. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is WNBC-TV, New York. 
So the deep four now for the Jets. Kerry Glenn, Rich Miano, two rookies, Davlin Mullen, and Johnny Lim. Those are the only healthy players left at the corner and safety position. Mark Duper. He was out of bounds with a first down at the 31, or do they say he was out of bounds? No, it's a first down at the 32-yard line. You can't cover the pattern any better than Lance Mel covered it. Number 56, a linebacker coming from the inside. But it's a perfect throw. There's Mel. He knew where the ball was going. He knew where Duper was, but he could not beat that hard throw into the corner. That's not Bobby Jackson, because Jackson, number 40, is back in the game. That must be Kirk Springs. Woody Bennett to the 37-38 yard line on first down. Ten minutes remaining in the third quarter in Miami. What's up there at NFL 85? Dick, third quarter at San Diego with a score tied at 13. The rookie out of Ole Miss, Tim Moffitt, is open. And Mark Wilson doesn't miss Moffitt. 34-yard gain that sets up a one-yard scoring run by Marcus Allen. And the Raiders are back in front, 20 to 13. Raiders next week will be meeting the Cincinnati Bengals here on NBC. Could be a battle of two first-place teams. Tony Nathan weaving his way close to a first down. It looks as if he's a half-yard short. Rusty Gilbo in on the play, number 94. Just a little delay. The fake first to Woody Bennett, and then they handed the ball back to Nathan. Officials are going to ask for the measurement as they bring out the yardstick. Either third and short or a first down for Miami outside the Dolphin 40. And it is a half yard short. Again, for those of you who might be joining us late, the New York Jets at 7-2. Two full games in front of Miami. So a Jets win would drop the Dolphins three back with six remaining. While a Miami victory would put them right back in the thick of the AFC East. New England has won. So a Miami victory would force a first place tie between the Jets and the Patriots. And of course would bring them to within a game of those two first place teams. Third and inches. A call to Davenport, and he got enough for the first down at the 44. We'd like to thank NBC's Miami affiliate, WSVN. That's Channel 7 here in Southern Florida. The blackout of today's game was lifted locally because our sister station bought up the remaining tickets and donated them to the United Way and Soper Super Kids, who are seated in the grandstands in their official United Way Soper Super Kids t-shirts. So uh, thanks to Channel 7. They made a lot of folks happy that are home today watching this telecast. Folks here in the stands were happy to see the uh, Dolphins get a first down. <laughs> Marino has still got his troops on the field. At the 44, leading 7-3, to three, eight minutes remaining third quarter. The 44-yard line. And Mark Duper, his sixth catch. Davlin Mullen bounces him out of bounds, but not until Duper adds 12 more to his total. And a first down at the 44 of the Jets. Watch Mark Duper right here on the inside. Just going to drift inside and then nail it to the sideline. He's going to find the opening there, running out behind, right there. They nail him on the sideline, breaks down. Nobody out there to get a hold of him. Well, I tell you that, I think one of the things that's happening, it's secondary for the Jets, just got to be shell-shocked with all those injuries, Dick. Six catches for Duper. Marino going for it all to Clayton. And Clayton did a good job of breaking up what appeared to be a good chance at a Jackson interception. Clayton had to knock it away. And that was an awkward throwing motion from Dan Marino. Uh, I don't know whether that's because of that bad side. It might be that he is not able to finish that long throwing motion when he's got the ball way downfield. Let's take a look at it. Looks like he's kind of whipping his body as he finishes the throw here. Remember, it's his, it's his right, or it's, it's his left thigh. He may not be able to, there it is. You see him kind of awkwardly putting his weight down. But look how he just has to kind of throw that over the top. 
Looks like he's a little apprehensive about settling down on that left thigh of his. Second and ten from the Jets' 44. Flag. Clayton tackled at the 35, but I believe a lineman for Miami tackled a Jet, and that'll cost him 10. Well, they're trying to undress Joe Klecko down there. They had his jersey almost three-fourths of the way to the ground. That's the bare facts of that penalty call. And Dallas now, after a 3-0 lead at halftime, has opened a 13-0 advantage in the third quarter at Washington. The penalty against Jeff Taves, number 60. And instead of another Miami first down, Marino will look at second down and 20. Well, we'll look at Mark Duper, who has six catches. You know, as high as a Dolphin is eight, so he's going after a career high, and his best yardage as a Dolphin is 202 yards. That was against Buffalo a couple of seasons ago. He already has 161 yards today. Another thing that I can bet you right now is that he is one exhausted fellow. By With that injury, you aren't able to work out, you aren't able to build up your endurance, and I'm sure knowing he was going to play, he's burned off a lot of emotional energy. He's going to be one tired young man this evening. Jets looking past. And Marino won't disappoint. Flag down. Complete to Clayton at the 40-yard line. Flag was thrown from deep downfield where you might expect uh, something wrong with the tight end. Well, exactly the same pattern that they defeated them with on the last play. It's the other way. It's against the Jets. Donnie Elder reacting angrily to what was said by the officials. Not a bad situation for the Dolphins. They can either take the penalty or take the reception. 14 yards on the Clayton catch. There's Joe Klecko. What a guy. You know, one of the nice stories, and there are many about him, a couple of years ago, it was Christmas time. He's with his mother, and mother was complaining about the refrigerator. On Christmas Eve, he and his brother went down to the local appliance store and said, want to buy a new refrigerator? He said, well, when do you want it? They want it right now. <laughs> they took it right home and gave it to mom. Did they carry it all the way home? <laughs> They're going to take the penalty, although it's shorter yardage, five, but it carries the first down, and on second and 20, it would have been third down and six had they taken the pass play, so they'll take the four new downs. Good decision. Puts them on the 49-yard line, basically. Seven minutes, eight seconds, clock running, third quarter. Miami leading in a tight defensive game, seven to three. Complete and Woody Bennett was wide open at the 40. Had he caught that one on a full steam, he had 10 yards or more downfield. Not a good throw for Marino. The ball thrown behind Bennett. Bennett has to swing all the way around. And you know, one of the things we've admired about Marino is his ability to see the open receiver. He missed one on that last play. Here he is. He wants to know, hey. Can I have a shot at that ball? There's nobody out there with him. They're working hard on 99 Mark Gastineau inside. That's green with some help from Stevenson. And they pin number 99. Well, it's help from Foster, 61, who came over from his guard position. Gastineau has not been heard of in the second half. That was a Miami Vice. Another timeout called by Marino. That leaves the Dolphins with only one remaining in this second half. There are some special things in this world that only a handful of people can appreciate. Now, maybe you're not one of these people. But if you are, spend some time getting to know Mazda's new RX-7. But I'll warn you, it'll flat spoil you for anything else. Introducing Mazda's new generation RX-7. Its engine has the smoothest flow of power in the world. No one has a more advanced suspension system, and no one offers all this at this price. It's pretty special, like you and me. That's a big step, Tom. I'm still going to go to college, Dad, but after the Army. 
I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics, and I can qualify for the new GI Bill and new Army College Fund. If you qualify, the new GI Bill and new Army College Fund can help you save over $25,000 for tuition. So you're going to be a soldier? working together. That's what it takes to achieve a difficult goal. For the people at Manville, the goal is this, to be America's very best supplier of quality products. Simple? Yes. Easy? No. Achievable? Well, the 21,000 people of Manville think so, and they're working together so you'll have the products you need when and where you need them. Yes, Manville is 21,000 people with one goal, to make Manville America's very best supplier. This fall, NBC Sports has a November to remember with the network premiere of the Kapalua International. One of the world's richest tournaments has drawn the always unpredictable Lee Trevino and an international field of golfers to the beautiful shores of Maui. The Kapalua International makes it a November to remember on NBC. Fortunately for the Jets, it is not a high humidity day and night in Miami. 78 degrees in the humidity low, but the way Joe Klecko's been working in the middle, plenty warm for him. His horses are working hard on the line. Second and ten, Miami. It's a good catch to Dan Johnson, the tight end. And a first down at the Jets' 29-yard line as we go to NFL 85. All right, Dick, stretching this metaphor to the breaking point, the Chargers opt to travel by rail again. And here is Little Train James, and this time all the way to the station, 33 yards for the touchdown. The game is tied at 20 in the third as Fouts celebrates. Dick. Oh, that Bob Katz, he's, he's ready to yell all aboard the way <laughs> Little Train's got him working. Train got him back in the game. That's an exciting ball game going on in San Diego. First down on a 22-yard Marino pass to Johnson. Flag down. Bruce Hardy wrapped up immediately by Rich Miano, a rookie from Hawaii. And we'll check the flag. It's on the near sideline. Offside, Jets. One thing we'd have to say at this point in the ballgame, the Dolphin offensive line has really done a fine job of negating the rush. The Jets have been putting on a great deal of pressure over the past few weeks. But the Dolphins, who have been suffering from a lot of, well, Marino hasn't Offside, been sacked. Number 55, defense. Still first down. Marino has not been sacked that much. But last week, uh, Shula said if it hadn't been for Marino's experience and his ability to get rid of the football, he probably would have been sacked ten times. So you can tell. And, of course, one of the reasons they've been able to play well today, John Giesler, with that knee injury, has stayed in the ball game, has played well. That allowed Cleveland Green to go play his normal position instead of having him out of position and having to put Ronnie Lee in the game. First and five. Touchdown! The Magic Markers, Mark Clayton and Mark Duper, and Miami leads 13 to 3. point by Reves. And the rookie, the youngest field goal kicker in the NFL, Reves from Tennessee, makes it 14 to 3. The crossing pattern to Clayton for the score. The tough catches are made across the middle. Clayton streaking inside off of that pass by Marino. You'll see it again, the good protection. They closed Klecko out. They've got Gastineau closed out. 
And Clayton, not to be outdone by his Mark's brother, who had a touchdown earlier, breaks across the middle and into the end zone. Let's look at Stevenson and Klecko. Klecko trying to open the way for Mark Gastineau from the other side. And you'll see one of the Jets knocked down here. That was a fine shot. Bobby Jackson going to the ground with an excellent block by one of the other wide receivers. Of course, that sprung it into the end zone. Mark Clayton, who has his own kid's corner down there in that end zone, and they're delighted to see their guy, and there he says, that's number two for you. Second touchdown of the season is the long time coming. 80-yard drive and 10 plays for Miami to take the lead 14 to 3. And the kick by Reves, very high. JoJo Townsell at the 8. And he's back to the 30-yard line. Tackled by Don McNeil. Veteran from Alabama, the cornerback who has returned from the injured list for the Dolphins. Here comes Ken O'Brien for the first time today. He's in the hole, down 14 to 3. Now, now's the time you begin to examine the character of football teams. They've been in this game very comfortably. All they needed to do was score a touchdown to jump out in front. But suddenly, Miami's offense has exploded. They've got to come back, get themselves into this game again. Six minutes left in the third quarter. O'Brien drilling to tune. And he's down at the 38 and a flag with it. They may have gotten his face mask. Boy, that tune really with quick feet. You can see why he was Wisconsin's most valuable player, both as a junior and as a senior. You know, he triple jumped. 53 feet plus. Actually, once had a jump almost 55. Mass foul, number 49. Defense enforced from the end of the run. First down. So that'll take a first down, the added yardage across the 40. There's Mark Clayton from Louisville. His sister is a freshman at the University of Miami on the basketball team. She's taller than he is. She's six feet tall. Well, if you read lips, you'd hear Mark saying, I'll be home next week. Uh, maybe he's going to go home and watch the basketball game. O'Brien to Walker. Whoa, my, just misses at the 10-yard line. A terrific throw by O'Brien was right on the money to Wesley Walker, who has had some of his biggest games against Miami, but shut out today. What a pretty pass. Beautifully timed by O'Brien. And right at the end of this play, looks like Walker's legs kind of give out on him. Watch him take the ball directly over his head. I think this is the toughest catch in football. Wide open. Boy, I tell you, that ball is perfectly thrown, and he has it. You'll see the strip. They're trying to knock it out of his hands there. But I think what knocked the ball loose was his contact with the ground. Wesley Walker using his 9-3 speed to get open. Freeman McNeil out to the 48-yard line. A gain of five. That'll bring up third down and five for the Jets. Again, the Jets trying to cross up that Miami defense, running in an obvious <laughs> passing situation. McNeil, we haven't seen a great deal of him in the second half. 18 rushes for 71. He sneaks up on you. He sure 71 is. yards on the day. Good backs do that, don't they? Doug Better is the star defensive lineman limping off for Miami. Max Moore going in, number 91 in his place. On third and five, O'Brien to Townsell. And JoJo Townsell is to the Miami 31. Good throw again by O'Brien. You know, we've seen him uh, several times now this year, but what a difference. Remember back to the opener against the Raiders, O'Brien, and comparing him to today, he has really matured in one season's time. He is making progress. There's Townsell. Did two years in the USFL, and well, he's playing today, as we mentioned again, because Sohn has, has been sick, came down with the flu just before the game, but has made his presence felt and certainly did it with a big play there. Here's Freeman McNeil, straight ahead power. A gain of four, maybe five. Mark Brown from Purdue in the middle of the Miami defense with a tackle and the clock running to the four-minute mark, third quarter. Looking down into the middle of that Miami defense, Jackie Ship has been in that ball game. There, there you see the score of our ball game. Jackie Ship 
has been in the middle of that defense, and they've been unhappy with the play of that youngster. They were going to take him out and put Brophy in, but Brophy came down with the flu earlier in the week. There's Jackie, number 50, and spent three days in the hospital. So Schmidt got a job back. Second and six, McNeil to the 24-yard line. A gain of three, so he has 79 yards on the afternoon. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Elsewhere in the fourth quarter now, Dallas with a lead and the Raiders and San Diego are tied at 20. Late substitutions on for the Miami defense. Rich Kotite calling the plays down from the press box. Third and three and a half. The shooter broken up at the last minute by rookie number 54, Alex Moyer. That was a touchdown that Moyer saved. When Bob Brzezinski held out earlier in the year, Alex Moyer was the man that Shula felt would step in and take his place. He got hurt. He's been on injured reserve. They brought him back and activated him. And look at the way he dogged Shula. Right at the last second, reached out, got a hand on that football, and knocked it away. Pat Leahy will try still another field goal. This one, 42 yards. He's one for three today. It is no good. Wide to the right. A bad day for Lee. He missed to the right. He went back and pulled one to the left. And now he's missed again to the right. got to believe that on the sideline his teammates even though they want to help him keep his emotional level up have got to be frustrated not a bad miss and I think that's the kind of thing where a, a kicker is trying to adjust he missed it right then he adjusted and kicked it left and Walton who's watched three of those go awry today the only makeable the only one he made was a an extra point a chip shot really this misses from 37, 41, and 42 yards, as you see. Now Marino with a 14 to 3 lead. Intercepted, Kyle Clifton. The second year linebacker from TCU has the second interception of the year. And Marino is picked off for the second time today. Well, we've seen the best of Marino, and we've seen a side of him today that has plagued. These Dolphins, he's made the mistakes today as well as the big plays. Clifton comes up with the football. The Jets have another opportunity. And Merlin, that's not the only bad news for Miami at the moment, the interception. We hear from the sidelines that Doug Betters has injured a knee and will not return to the Dolphin lineup today. Perhaps their best down lineman. Well, he is their best down lineman, not perhaps. No, no perhaps on that one. So the Jets, after missing the field goal, get it right back at the 37-yard line. O'Brien wide open is Walker. And what a recovery by Miami's Paul Langford, number 44. Walker had to slow up just a bit, and Langford, a world-class intermediate hurdler, caught the ball, caught up to the ball. You call that a cushion. Look at the acceleration there and how much room he has. And the cushion disappears as the ball is slightly late in arriving. Langford able to close that distance and get a hand on it to knock it away. The ball a little late in being thrown. Flag down as well. Langford, uh, an outstanding 400-meter uh, intermediate uh, hurdler. I said, you ever run against Edwin Moses? He said twice. I said, what did you learn by running against that... Olympic champion. He said, I learned that he looks great from behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was looking at Walker from behind, but he closed the distance like a real sprinter. 47-yard line after the holding penalty. 
First and 20. Threw it away. Schuler was the closest jet. Mike Charles pressuring O'Brien. 2.15 left third quarter as we go to Bob Costas. All right, Dick, in San Diego, the Raiders take the lead again. Mark Wilson throws for Jesse Hester. When Danny Walters misses the tackle, watch Marcus Allen. He picks two defenders and allows Jesse Hester to break free. The play covers 54 yards, and the Raiders lead 27-20. Yeah, real pitchers battle in San Diego. 27-20 Raiders. Here it's 14-3 Miami. Second and 20 for the Jets. Freeman McNeil at the 43. They tried to catch the Dolphins looking pass, but McNeil only gained three or four. Mike Charles made the tackle, replacing Doug Betters. There's Charles, a second-year man, third-year man from Syracuse. Charles actually on the nose, Dick, and it's it's Mac Moore. It's the one you see out there, 91 Mac Moore, that's on the uh, left end. The two of them built much alike. It's an easy thing to to mix. Washington has scored in the fourth quarter. Theismann to Gary Clark, 11-yard pass with 13 minutes left. Down the middle to Toon. Al Toon. Look at the moves that rookie puts on the defense of the Dolphins. And a big jet first down. Oh, my. Toon streaking across the field. O'Brien finds him close to the sideline. But it's what Toon does after he catches the ball that is most impressive here. Watch him. After he gets his hands on that football, he'll get away from Ernest Rowe, 55, right there. Explodes. Keeps his balance, tiptoes down that sideline, and finally pushed out by Glenn Blackwood, 47. But oh, that's a big pickup all the way down to the 14-yard line. 29 yards for Toon, his fourth catch. First down at the 14. Wide open, Freeman McNeil. Touchdown! McNeil diving into the end zone is shaken. O'Brien finding McNeil all alone in the left flat, but in his desire to reach the end zone, well, it appears to be okay now. I don't know what it was, but that's frightening for trainers and coaches alike. Prima McNeil's the meal ticket. Not only as a runner, but you see the little burst pattern outside. O'Brien sees him open out there. Just, we'll watch the kick and then take you back to see the last part of that play. Leahy, oh, he didn't hit that one too plainly. Barely skidded it inside the left upright. Flagged down, I believe Miami was offside. Boy, Leahy just almost Pointer shanked good. that one. With a offside pop. on the middle guard. The so they'll assess the five-yard penalty on the ensuing kickoff, and Leahy will kick off from the 40. It's now a 14-10 game. Kyle Clifton's interception, and then an O'Brien to Freeman McNeil touchdown. Here it is. Freeman McNeil, right-hand side of your picture, just disappeared. He'll come back again, and he's all alone. Watch what he does as he works past Glenn Blackwood right there. Just stops. A little shot right there on Blackwood's shoulder, and he may have strained it may have strained something as he turns inside, but watch the control of speed here. Look at him. He just stops right there and just kind of gives him a limp leg and over the top into the end zone. There you see him as he went down with that injury. You know, he said that he was not much of a high school player until a senior. In fact, as a sophomore, he said, I was a A-Y-O. I said, what's that? He said, when the coach yelled out, all you others, I went with them. But, boy, he became a star as a senior and then an All-American at UCLA. And over 1,000 yards here in 1985. I understand Gerald Riggs also over the 1,000-yard mark, the Atlanta Falcons runner. Lorenzo Hampton at the 10. And he's down at the 18 with the flag. Dennis Blygen, the running back from St. John's, made the tackle. 
The Jets are right back in this game with a minute and five seconds left in the third quarter. Oh, how you might be agonizing if the difference in this game ended up being four points, realizing that you have missed so many field goals on the day. I, I've got to believe that Leahy is praying for another Jets touchdown. Well, there's a signal you don't see very often anymore. A clipping call, actually blocking below the waist rather than the push in the back. Clipping. I'm going to take the week two. off next Wondering Sunday, going to New York and sit in. <laughs> First that would second. really be fun. Wouldn't it to be in the studio live? I, I, are they going to use the David Letterman studio? I mean, no pun intended there. Anyway, uh, Tate Rosell is going to be there, the commissioner of the NFL, and there will actually be live questioning of the football commissioner on NFL 85. So don't miss that to start our coverage next Sunday. We can guarantee some action, I think. And some good answers, And too. some excitement. The commissioner is pretty, pretty light on his feet. From inside the 10, it's Tony Nathan to the 15-yard line. Good run on first down. Joe Klecko took himself out of that play from his nose tackle position, 73. Watch him just jump through the gap there. Stevenson just helps him on his way. It opened up inside for Nathan, who made a fine gain on the play. And again, that battle on the nose, as we mentioned it, the first game, you'd have to give the nod to Klecko in that battle with Stevenson. Here tonight, even though they both had big plays, I think Stevenson is winning the overall contest. It was a unanimous decision in uh, New York for Klecko. A mild, maybe split decision for Stevenson today. Fumble, and the Dolphins recover. It appeared to be Jeff Taves. Yes, Taves, number 60, and that ball for grabs at the Miami 21. The ball stripped away by Kyle Clifton, number 59, the linebacker. And that is the end of the third quarter. Miami 14, the Jets 10. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Stories. We're actually watching TV from outer space. And they're coming here. They're coming tonight. Amazing tonight. In Washington, the nation's capital, the word around town is German. Back. The number one imported German beer in Washington. Got a problem? Need a friend? Call United Way of Essex and West Hudson. First Call for Help is a free confidential service that can put you in touch with problem solvers. I haven't got the time to go to the track, so OTB is the next best thing. At OTB, you get a free program. It's all condensed on a small sheet. It tells you the horses, the races, the scratches, the jockeys, the odds. I can run out here, and in two or three minutes, I'm online, and they take me in, the, in those two minutes. There are more tellers than there used to be. When they do the live calls, right, um, you hear the horse, and you hear your horse, and you say, come on, come on, come on. New York City OTB, changing for the better. OTB is really New York. There's something special on the horizon. American Airlines' ultimate super savers. Incredible low fares to over 90 cities throughout the continental U.S. and Canada. Discounts up to 70%. Fares from $44 to $151. Call American Airlines for an ultimate super saver before another day passes you by. In San Francisco, the city where people leave their hearts, the word around town is German. Bex. Bex. The number one imported German beer in San Francisco. New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley on Strictly Business tonight, 1145. We interrupt this program for a special report from News 4 New York. Hundreds of people are being evacuated from their homes in Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Two small aircraft collided in midair over the Hudson River around 515, then crashed into that Bergen County town. Fire officials there tell us at least three people are dead. An unknown number of injured are being taken to five different hospitals. An entire block of homes is on fire on Cliff Street in Cliffside Park. The crash and fire have disrupted power and gas lines. There are scattered blackouts. We'll have more on this story as it becomes available and a complete report on News 4 New York at 11 o'clock. We now return to the football game. Both teams with high yardage in passing and not a great deal in running. Total yardage, uh, 341 to 296, very close. Time of possession still in favor of the Jets. 
But on the clock, it's still the Dolphins who prevail, 14 to 12 in score. Yeah, three makeable field goals. The difference, the Jets have had possession and field position, but Pat Leahy is only one for four today. Second and four, Nathan. He's able to drag Gastineau across the 30 and a first down. That's a funny play. It's a it's a play that's that's designed to give to the second back. You fake to the first back and kind of lay it into the second back with a little delay. Gastineau all the way past the play. Watch him now as they'll fake to Bennett. And Tony Nathan just comes in there and hides behind that play and then slides in underneath. Gastineau coming from behind. You see him trying to take that ball away? He got his hands on the football, but Nathan put the clamps on it and kept a hold of it. First down at the 31. Looking for Clayton. Gastineau trips up Marino. That will not be a sack because Marino gained maybe a half yard. Pure speed from Mark Gastineau. 465 for the big man at over 285 pounds. He comes inside. He's double teamed on the play and he bounces off, gets in behind Marino, but watch him just use his speed to get out and get a piece of Marino's heels and knock him to the ground. Gain of a half yard at second down and a long nine. See Gastineau with his head down a little bit, even though it's cooled down. These players have been going at it fast and furious on the line of scrimmage. Terry Glenn wrestling Mark Clayton out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Glenn, the 10th round draft pick rookie from Minnesota, who's done a solid job. He has a couple of interceptions and one for a touchdown. Got the game ball last week against Indianapolis. He made seven tackles, recovered two fumbles, and an interception. Playing in place of Russell Carter, who's got back spasms. In fact, they've got him in the hospital and have had him in traction. They're concerned about about his health, but Kerry Glenn certainly filling in admirably, and that's one thing that the Jets have been blessed with a lot of speed in that defensive backfield. They're, they're fortunate in that regard. Third and two. Going deep for Duper. And Duper ever so close to pulling off another long gainer just off his fingertips. And Marino actually threw that ball while falling backwards, just that quick flick of the wrist, and so very close to being on target. And the man that was very nearly beaten on the play, Kerry Glenn, right there, coming in behind, stretching out. Now, that ball should have been caught. You can't throw it any better than that. And that might just be a testimony. There's that some rust. Yep, there's some rust there. The timing not quite there, but... Duper, in spite of that play, has had a big, big day. Art Clayton has <laughs> Duper in this Duper's had a big day. Roby hammers one toward Townsell. Ooh, look out. And down by Bruce Hardy at about the 21-yard line. Maybe the 22 is where he touched it first. The timeout, 12 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Bigger engines were easy on oil. But today's smaller, higher revving engines are tougher. They can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castrol. Tests show Castrol suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castrol, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. boss on a cattle drive. You put in long days under the big sky, and when the work's over, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Brewed the natural way so it's always as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountain. Head for... The Pfizer Mercury Links has plenty of room. And it's only $29.95 a day. At budget. But budget has another car. One that's more my style. The Lincoln Town Car. Look at this headroom. 
And even us, big shots like budget small price. Only $39.95 a day. Get the economy of luxury. Or the luxury of economy. Go to budget and say, the car, or the car. Today's game is brought to you by Honda All-Terrain Vehicles. Inventors of the ATC three-wheeler and four-track four-wheeler. By Castrol, the motor oil engineered for smaller cars. And by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. Dick Hanberg, Merlin Olson at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Doug Betters, one of the game's top defensive linemen, will be on the sidelines the rest of this one with a injured knee. And the Jets trailing 14 to 10 have the football at their own 22. The quickie on the outside to Walker, and he drops another. It's been a long afternoon for veteran Wesley Walker. That's at least the third ball that was more than catchable that's gone through his fingertips. So important to get those opportunities when you have them. You're out there all by yourself. Well, that's a long walk back to the huddle when you've dropped an easy one like that. There's a comparison. The two quarterbacks on the day, both over the 50% mark, yardage very nearly the same. No interceptions. That's, That's where O'Brien has shined all year. O'Brien has been able to avoid the interceptions throughout the season. Intercepted only five times. That's low in the AFC. On second and ten, O'Brien right back to the sidelines. A flag down. And out of bounds goes Bobby Humphrey, short of the first down. Check that, Johnny Hector, 34, with the catch. Hector may have been ticketed for using his shoulders. No. Another holding call against Miami. That'll carry an automatic first down since they gained uh, the Jets less than 10. They'll take the five yards on the first down out at the 27. Don Shula. Defense. Five yards, automatic first down. Schuler will be a little upset. They didn't announce who that was. He likes to know. You get those cold, those cold eyes when you come to the sideline. That is uh, not an ordinary statistic for the Dolphins. Eight penalties and 69 yards. Shula said we never let an error go unchallenged or uncorrected because they multiply. Someone says, well, you know, five yards is a small flaw. He says every mistake is big. And he really teaches not to commit the penalty, so he won't be happy with that number. Well, he, that penalty let the Jets off the hook. McNeil. Second effort was able to get a couple after he had been stopped cold. It's short of the first down. Twelve minutes left here as we go to NFL 85. Dick, you thought these references were over with, but the Chargers are driving again, and a little train James is at it once more, makes the catch from Dan Fouts. Football fans haven't seen this kind of locomotion since the days of Charlie Choo Choo Justice. Back to Dick. Ooh, he's big on North Carolina history, too. <laughs> I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. That little Lionel, little train James, he can. O'Brien. He can, too, and it's a first down at the 48-yard line. Wesley Walker will savor that reception. Walker with that drop moments ago goes inside, and I'll tell you again, those are the tough catches for the wide receivers. They've got to go in there knowing that there are a lot of bodies coming their direction. That ball thrown low. That's one thing I like about O'Brien. When you're coming in front of those deep backs, he'll, he'll put that ball down low. If you can't get it, those extra DBs don't get it either. So the Jets at midfield, trailing 14 to 10, with 10.49 left in the game. McNeil. And they are fumble, fumble, and Miami is recovered. They not only stopped McNeil, they forced him to fumble for the second time. Mark Brown wound up with a football, and Mike Charles was the man who made the hit. At the 50-yard line, the Dolphins get it back. Mac Moore in the thick of that, and you see the frustration from Joe Walton. They're running right at 91, Mac Moore on this play. Moore out to the outside, Bob Brzezinski, 59. There's a stop from the inside, and there it is. Charles 
coming out from his nose tackle position, knocks it away, and Jackie Ship, Mark Brown, take it back. 51, Mark Brown pounced on that football. So leading 14 to 10. On the turnover, it's Marino at the 50. Woody Bennett into Joe Klecko and a lot of other green jerseys for a gain of two. And apparently, little train had, whether he got the touchdown or not, maybe it was the caboose. So it was Gary Anderson, Fouts to Anderson, a 21-yard pass, the former Arkansas star who played uh, so brilliantly in the USFL and is really coming into his own very quickly with the Chargers. What a game in San Diego. Well, it's nice to see the Chargers back and charging, and it's nice to see the Raiders bounce back from that defeat they took at the hands of the Seahawks last week. Second and nine. Complete at the 43 as Marino gets by Gastineau, picks up six more. It'll be third down and four when we return. Let's go to Bob. All right, Dick, as you mentioned, it's not the train this time, but rather Gary Anderson, the USFL signee who has helped the Chargers so much in recent weeks. 21-yard touchdown on the pass from Fouts. Fouts is thrown for three TDs, and the game is tied at 27. Now, thanks, Bob, and we'll look forward to that very special NFL 85 edition at 12.30 next Sunday Eastern Time that will kick off our day's coverage, a doubleheader day on NBC with the Commissioner of Football, Pete Rosell, live in your NFL 85 studios. Big call here, third down and three. Almost a sensational one-handed catch by Bruce Hardy as Marino with a jet flying in. I believe it was Ben Rudolph untouched, and Hardy almost came up with a great catch. Could have been... Uh, now we see another injured jet limping off, and it's at the position where they're Adlin hurt most, Davlin Mullen. Mullen is going off, hopping on that one leg, and further depleting the defensive backs. Donnie Elder, 37, standing in the foreground, but it was Ben Rudolph shooting inside, and Marino, knowing that he was going to have Hardy down the middle, tried to get the ball to Hardy, and look at him fight for that football. Ooh, that hurts to have that big horse come down on you, too. Now the Jets, after losing the ball on the McNeil fumble, will get it back, apparently, as Roby to punt. Soundzell back at the 10-yard line. 8.56 left. Fourth quarter, Miami 14, the New York Jets 10. Oh, he hit that one over the stadium. And it lands at the two and is down by Joe Carter at the two-yard line. So the Jets will start 98 yards away on a 41-yard punt by Roby. In a recent independent test, new car shoppers compared Renault Alliance to Toyota Corolla. In riding comfort, Renault won. Driving ease, Renault won. In styling, comfort, and convenience, Renault won. In fact, Renault won over Toyota in 29 out of 30 categories. Renault Alliance, with 550 Plus, America's best small car protection. Get 8.8% factory financing on any 86 Alliance or Encore. When you're dealing with higher volumes of information and need answers fast, you search everywhere for solutions, but find it hard to get on top of things. That's why IBM created the personal computer AT, with the power to push high performance even higher. With the AT, fast becomes faster, and the capacity to handle data becomes greater, all to help put your business on solid ground. The IBM personal computer AT, for advanced technology. Come along. We're going to try to find a banker. To be called a banker, you know, you've had to have had very special training in the management of people's money. Don't see any bankers here. Bankers have hundreds of years of banking tradition to back them up. No bankers here. And bankers offer the newest ideas to help your money grow. There is one catch. The only place you'll find a banker is the bank. A message from America's full-service banks. The NFL plays here when the Bengals battle. 
all the Raiders. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 85. Back at the Orange Bowl in Miami with all the talk about the refrigerator, they called you the mule. Did you ever had a hankering to carry the football? Dick, I always wanted to carry the football. I didn't get many chances at it, although in college once they gave it to me and I went 21 yards. I still have a 21-yard average as a running back. <laughs> Put him in from the end zone. O'Brien going deep to tune, incomplete, and a flag is down. So O'Brien and the Jets throwing from the New York end zone, trying to hit Tune and another penalty against Miami. And Don Chula's jaw becomes even more iron. See him turn to Chuck Studley and said, hey, come on, let's go out there. Five yards, automatic first down. Automatic first down. Call. Brzezinski trying to hang on to one of those receivers. These quarterbacks working under a lot of heat tonight. The Jets have been pressured 10 times by this Miami defense. That's a lot. They have not been getting that much heat on in past weeks. He's been knocked down. O'Brien's been knocked down three times and sacked three times on the evening. First down from the eight. Freeman McNeil. For the entire Miami defense, zero. 24 Freeman McNeil McNeil who's an artist at making yards where there are no yards available he couldn't even do anything with that mess killer bees have really played up to their reputation of past years that's not been the case as we showed you earlier they've been giving up a lot of yards a lot of points they have been tough today against the run they have been tough indeed I think Jay Brophy is in there. Brophy, as we mentioned, spent three days in the hospital earlier this week. He's gone in to replace Jackie Schiff. Mac Moore. You feel like you're going to get some of this action for yourselves. There's the shot right there. Mac Moore, the right end, has gone in in place of betters. He gets the first piece. And there's the second piece by Mark Brown. O'Brien thinking about throwing that ball away. I think it's good he didn't. 39th sack of the year against O'Brien. He and Warren Moon down 35 times. That was tops in the NFL starting today. And he's really deep in his own end. Third and long. flag intentionally grounding now if, if that's in the end zone Dick that'll be a safety they're going to have to sort it out was he in the end zone when he released that pass because any penalty he did not signal safety so apparently he was just across the goal line we'll look at it from the end line Mac Moore again streaking in from the I think he's in the end zone and I think they blew that call, Dick. Rounding, number seven, half the distance to the goal line, it's and they lose the down. It's where the ball it's is, down. not where the man is. He's lunging toward the line. He may have gotten that ball over the goal line before he released it. That close to a two-point play for the Dolphins. It's a loss of down penalty, so it's fourth down. And Jennings will have to get his heels right on that back line. And only... An 11-yard distance between the one-yard line where the ball will be snapped and where Jennings will have to receive the ball. So he'll have to hurry his kick. He stepped up and asked Tony Page, I think, to move forward a little bit. That's not much room to kick it. Vigorito at the 45 in Jets territory. Good high kick. Vigorito, fair catch at the 40-yard line and Miami in excellent field position and we have a skirmish out at the 35. Uh, just a little bump and shove which happens so often on the special teams. 43 Bud Brown in the middle of that one for the Miami Dolphins. Under the circumstances a good 39-yard punt no return 
by Jennings. And Dick, the clock that has seemed to be abundant with time suddenly is closing down a little bit on the Jets. Let's go back and look at that play by O'Brien. Remember, if that ball breaks the plane of the goal line coming out, then the ball is considered to be out of the end zone. I believe O'Brien is able to lunge over that goal line and saved the Jets two points. That may turn out to be a big play. Actually, the ruling on the play, it's a sack, a one-yard sack, and a one-yard penalty, and the loss of the down. He didn't have much real estate to work with there to take away, but he did save the two. And that's the time where you're glad to have an experienced kicker. Jennings did a good job of getting that ball away under pressure, got pretty good distance on it. The Jets now turn the responsibility over to their defense. They know that it's getting critical. And Marino at Miami only a first down away from field goal territory with a 14 to 10 lead. Seven minutes remaining. And Bennett just did get back. Nathan. Clever running by the veteran halfback Nathan, who skipped out of several grasps. Same play I believe we've seen a number of times today as they just shield Nathan with Woody Bennett going inside and in the football 37 yards on seven rushes on the day he he complained about not getting enough work last week well he certainly has had a, an arm load of, of carries this evening Pat Leahy still contemplating the three field goals that were within his range that he missed he's one for four for the day Second and four, Miami. Dan Johnson. And Johnny Lynn gets him out of bounds at the 23. First down, Miami. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC-TV, New York. Dan Marino with that last completion over the 300-yard mark on the afternoon. And Miami with a first down and 6 minutes, 16 seconds left. Ball at the Jets' 22-yard line. Nathan for two more, named after the actor, Joe Klecko with the stop. Well, I tell you, you look down and you, you look at the mud collecting, the, the dirt collecting on those jerseys, and you get a feeling for how hard that battle has been in the pits tonight. Bodies smashing back and forth, and I'll take my head off to that Miami offensive line. John Geisler, Taves, Foster, Stevenson, Green, they've done a fine job. On second and eight, Klecko is offside, and Nathan will get four or five yards, but you saw Klecko guessed wrong and was trying to stay out of that neutral zone, could not get back. It can't do everything at the same time, and you can't do too much. You've got to do your job first. Klecko, so anxious to make the big play, wants to get something happening down there. Trying to guess what that Offside, snap got. Number 73. You were talking with Dwight Stevenson yesterday, and quickness was on his mind. And last week he tried to be too quick against New England. There were a couple of fumbled snaps. Well, you won't uh, flub the ball if you stay right with us on the Peacock tonight. Punky Brewster, Silver Spoon, Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories, Alfred Hitchcock presents, and then our NBC Sunday night movie at 9 o'clock, Streets of Justice. So stay right where you are. Five minutes and 15 seconds left. Second and three after the five-yard penalty. It's intercepted by the Jets. The second time today, Marino has been picked off in the end zone. Bobby Jackson has his fourth of the year. Oh, those are two wicked intercepts against Marino. The third interception on the day, and as you mentioned, the second in the end zone. Beautiful play by Jackson. They've been picking on him a little bit earlier, 
but Jackson times his turn perfectly and fights for that football. He's the man that comes down with it, taking it away from Mark Clayton. Here's another look as Jackson, who was injured earlier in the game, returning to steal it from Clayton, and the Jets have it at their own 20. Too small to play high school football, was a drummer in the band until he grew up. Boy, he pounded the timpani on Marino, and it's a first down at the 20 for the Jets. Freeman McNeil for four. Four hard-earned yards for Freeman McNeil with four minutes and 50 seconds left here at the Orange Bowl. Let's check elsewhere with Bob Costas. Dick, what a wild affair it has been in San Diego. Less than two minutes remaining. Wilson finds Todd Christensen for the go-ahead touchdown. It's 34-27 in favor of the Raiders. Less than two minutes remaining, and Christensen, after a job well done, takes a seat. Four and a half minutes left in the Orange Bowl, and the Jets trail 14-10. to 10. Hector in motion. Flags are down. And wide open is Al Toon. Win or lose, the Jets are going to have a difficult time keeping Al Toon on the bench. He has shown why he was the number one pick. Offense, two men moving. Two men in motion on the play, an illegal shift. And O'Brien, there's no way he could see what was happening behind him. That's not a penalty, that's not a mistake by the quarterback. One of those offensive backs simply blew the play. That cost 20 yards to the Jets offense. So instead of a first down out near midfield, and there's the final Dallas. Holds on at Washington, 13 to seven. The Cowboys win it. Dick Kenberg with Merlin Olson at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Pat Leahy of the Jets, one for four today, or had he been hot, the Jets would be in front. But it's Miami, 14 to 10. Freeman McNeil. He's out in the open for a moment and down at the 33, and that was the last Dolphin as Tony Page threw a key block. Bud Brown, number 43, there to make the tackle on McNeil. McNeil, who's been held in check here in this second half, able to break free on this play. Starts it over. Watch him cut against the grain here. Billy Shields trying to help with a block. But there it is. The saving tackle by number 43, Bud Brown. And McNeil over the 1,000-yard mark on the season. Over 100 yards again today. That's 13 times in the last 21 games for him. First down at the 33. O'Brien to tune. And he has another first down at the 45 before Paul Langford can yank him down. First down, Jets. First down, Costas. All right, Dick. The Cowboys and Giants remain tied atop the NFC East at 7-3. and three. The Redskins fall to 5-5. Five and five. Desperation throw by Theismann in the closing seconds comes down in the arms of Everson Walls. It's 13-7, Dallas. down for the Jets as Al Toon has five catches today. O'Brien. Oh, my. Mark Brown covering Johnny Hester. Hector, and that shovel pass by O'Brien saved a sack, but it looked for a moment is going to go right to the Dolphin linebacker. He's going to jump in behind O'Brien and watch the heat on O'Brien. He'll get away from the shot right there. Hugh Green. Hugh Green, but try to throw that ball up. You green in behind him quickly. Two minutes, 49 seconds left. Miami 14, the Jets 10. And it appeared that Miami was offside. A free play for O'Brien, incomplete, through the hands of Freeman McNeil, who thought he was hit early by Mark Brown. It appeared that Charles in the middle of the defense had jumped too soon. We've seen Klecko off twice today, and I think that's the second for Charles. He was off earlier. And that is exactly right. You don't want to stop on a play like that. You keep going, and obviously that's the kind of Offside, time that you can... Number 71, defense, still second down. That's a time when you can take a risk offensively if you know that penalty is on the defense. Doug Betters, for those of us, you who have joined us uh, late, Doug Betters, the star defensive end for the Miami Dolphins, left here in the second half with a bruised knee and will not return. Kirk Springs of the Jets was hurt early and has not returned. Second down and five. Double reverse. 
This is Bobby Humphrey and a flag down. Humphrey has first down yardage, but we may have a penalty against the Jets. We had an illegal block. Hugh Green had gotten himself in good position. And one of the Jets, in his anxiousness, just came down on the back of his legs. Illegal block above the waist. Number 65 offense. 10 yards. Still second down. The general, Joe Fields, the veteran center. And each side has been ticketed 10 times. And for Miami, it's unusual to see them with more penalty yards than their opponents. Very unusual. And critical situation approaching here for the Jets. Time on the clock ticking down. 231, 230. Second and 15 yards to go. The clock not stopped by the penalty in this situation. If it were in the final two minutes, it would have been. Second and 15. O'Brien completes to Wesley Walker, short of the first down at the 49. That'll probably take it up to the two-minute timeout. Jets not greedy on that play. Content to get part of it. I'm sure they're in four-down territory. Two downs left to pick up the first down. It'll be third down, six for the Jets, and two minutes left, down by four. And the defensive strategy. You could be working for yards here, but the Dolphin defense knows the Jets have to put it in the end zone. That gives them a little edge as they approach uh, this last two minutes of play. Let's check the timeouts for you. Miami has one remaining. That's not so critical for them. They have the lead, at least at the moment it is not. The Jets had to spend one earlier themselves, so they have two remaining. We're at the two-minute mark, and undoubtedly Coach Joe Walton Pride and joy of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania will go, if he does not make it here on third down, will go for it on fourth down at midfield. How about that San Diego Dan Fouts to Charlie Joyner, a 14-yard touchdown pass, and with 53 seconds left, the Chargers tie the Raiders. Good. Marvin Powell, veteran tackle. I think what happened is that that was a call made on the first sound. Powell must have thought he heard it, and he bounces out of there. That's where the crowd helped Miami, and more and more, the sophisticated crowds around the NFL are making it very difficult for the visiting teams, and I really believe, if not this year, next year, there's going to have to be a toughening of the rules. They'll have to find a way to keep the crowd from taking advantage of the visiting team that way. A home field advantage is big enough without allowing that. What are they going to do? Eat the flag here? They can't do that, can they? Conversation. All start. Offense. Well, it's... So that'll make a third and 11 instead of third and six. Shula, I think, upset at what he thought was such a clear-cut call that the officials would all gather together. But in a way, you can't blame them. They don't want to make a mistake here to turn the momentum of a game. One of Ken O'Brien's top games with a Jets, a 300-yard game, a touchdown, no interceptions. He sends Toon to the left, Walker to the right. Goes down the middle, complete to Toon, not good enough for the first down. He's to the 47 and a half, two and a half yards short, and they'll go for it on fourth down. Toon working all the way across the field to pick it up. They'll go for it without a huddle. Here they are. Do or die. They get it, and we'll call time. First down at the 41, and Al Toon, who caught only nine passes in the first nine games this year, has seven today and over 100 yards. Well, you earn your football spurs a piece at a time. And Ken O'Brien with that play under tremendous heat, able to step forward and deliver that ball. So the drama continues in Miami with one minute, 30 seconds left. One of the stars today for the Jets, Al Toon, wide to the left. First down, O'Brien down the middle. It's Toon again, and the first down at the 20. And this brilliant rookie from Wisconsin has his eighth catch today. And the Jets are 20 yards away from taking the lead. Down the middle, open is Cleaver for a touchdown. Rocky Cleaver. Defense. 
second tight end, Alex Moyer, number 54, has not had that much experience in big games. He got behind Rocky Cleaver, and Ken O'Brien put it right in the big tight end's hand. He had to make a great catch to hang on to it. Cleaver's second touchdown of the season, only his eighth catch of the year. And now Leahy, who has made uh, place kicking a dramatic affair, and he just does hook that one inside the pole. So that's how he's been kicking all day. Almost missed two extra points. He's missed three field goals, but that's the negative. But the Jets are on this. top. Dick, I'll tell you one thing. He is the most relieved man in this ballpark. The game is no longer on his shoulders, and you see Shula saying to his troops, we still have some time. Look at this pass by O'Brien. Cleaver up in the air, hooked that ball with one hand and controlled it. What a fine catch. That was a marvelous 80-yard drive by the Jets and O'Brien, and the Jets well should celebrate. Remember, they had to save that touchdown on a fourth and three. O'Brien hitting tune under pressure. And that's where all of the preparation for your two-minute drill pays giant dividends. They deserve to celebrate on a play like that. Now the cards are dealt to Miami and Don Shula. One minute and six seconds left. He has one timeout remaining. He does not need a touchdown. He needs to get at least into field goal range. Fouad Reves, his outstanding rookie kicker, has not tried a field goal today, but we should remind you, he has missed only twice all year, and both of those were over 50 yards. So if they can get close, as that score is in overtime in San Diego, Miami has a chance to send this into overtime. Lorenzo Hampton at the seven. He's got some running room. 25-30. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. So Miami with 58 seconds left in great field position. Let's go to NFL 85. Dick, what great games to close the day on NBC. You mentioned that the Chargers and Raiders are in overtime. That's because of this play. Dan Fouts, fourth touchdown throw of the afternoon. 14-yarder to Charlie Joyner in the closing minute. Raiders couldn't move in the last few seconds. They go to OT. There's Fouad Reves, the rookie place kicker from Tennessee. One timeout remaining for Miami. The ball is at the Dolphin 44 with 58 seconds left. Dick, that long return we mentioned earlier, the three top tacklers for the special teams of the Jets all out of this game. Barber, Munger, Bruckner, all gone for this game. That may have helped Miami to set great field position for this play. Marino out of the shotgun. They're coming with the linebackers, and he finds Clayton. Clayton trying to get out of bounds. Does he? Yes, what an effort by Clayton being shirt tail down. The wide receiver saved the final timeout by struggling out of bounds and stopping the clock with 49 seconds left. Again, preparation, training. Clayton knows he's got to get that football out of bounds. Rich Miano trying to force him out, gets a hand on him right here, dragging on that shirt tail, and Clayton just lunges and holds that football out over the line to the 50-yard line, the six-yard game, not as important as stopping the clock. And at the moment, that is the Jets here, all along with Ken O'Brien. Second and four.
to the depths of despair. You've just seen it here. And, he, and on the other side, from the depths of despair into ecstasy. Reve's extra point try. The big extra point is 2017. 21-17. With 41 seconds left. The Jets will look for a miracle. It took only 17 seconds. The capper, 50 yards, Marino to Duper, his second long touchdown of the day. When you cover tight, bump and run, man to man, you've got to get pressure on that quarterback. Bobby Jackson allowed Duper to get out. Duper juggling that football, but comes up with the ball and the touchdown to put Miami back on top. Here it is again. It's the best day yardage-wise in Duper's Miami career. Look at the juggling act. One, two, and then he just hugs it with a right hand. He has 217 yards today. Two touchdowns on eight catches. And Marino says, oh, what a different game this is when I have both Clayton and Duper. We talked to Don Shula in his office yesterday. He said, I keep waiting for things to turn around. I think they just did. Yeah, there's the catalyst. Matt Leahy hoping that the Jets can muster their own miracle. They won't return this one. They'll start from the 20, 80 yards away with one timeout left and 41 seconds on NBC tonight. Punky Brewster. Then the amazing stories of Steven Spielberg and Alfred Hitchcock. It's a great Sunday night. And at 9 o'clock, our special movie of the week, Streets of Justice. Two of the Miami drives in this game have been two-play efforts by Marino. 20 and 60-yard passes to Duper, 80 yards for one touchdown, 6 yards to Clayton, and then 50 yards to Duper for the last drive. O'Brien to Toon, trying to get out of bounds, and Al Toon, what a game he's had. Al Toon is having a field day of his own, not only picking up yardage, he gets out of bounds. Great game for Toon and O'Brien, but the sad news is there's not much time on the clock, and this has got to be a game in which if the Jets don't win, they'll go back home saying, hey, we just flat ran out of time. Al Toon, nine catches, nine games, nine catches today. But Mark Duper has returned with eight of his own and 217 yards, and that's the difference. Well, they got to be cheering up there in Boston, New England country, for Miami. That's a hook and ladder play. And the Jets get it again. It was a fumble, a live ball, and downfield Johnny Hector got to it for the Jets, and that stopped the clock at the 49 of Miami. Design play. They want to get the lateral here off the pass, and here it is. Comes to Freeman McNeil, their best runner. He never got his hands on it. Watch Hector coming up from the backside. He'll just reach down and swat that ball out of bounds. Smart play by Hector. 22 seconds left. Miami by four. Freeman McNeil. Well, it wouldn't have gotten the Jets much anyway. Hugh Green, acquired from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The great All-American in Pittsburgh was there to cover. 15 seconds left. And how lonely it is. New England with a win earlier. Should the Jets lose, would move into a first place tie, and Miami then would climb within a game of the lead. Should the Jets pull it out, that knocks the Dolphins down three games off the lead. O'Brien has had a brilliant day. 375 yards. Goes deep. Wesley Walker trying to get out of bounds and does at the 37, 36 yard line. But now the Jets face a final play. Joe Walt 
Hamilton. Might as well spend the time out here and concoct that final effort. Obviously, you've got to get it into the end zone. Five seconds remaining. They go with the three wide receivers to the right. 